Okay, good afternoon, uh, everyone. And good afternoon, council and staff. Uh, welcome to those who, who are watching us uh, virtually. And uh, again, it's uh, Wednesday, October 7th, 2020. Um, I'm going to call this meeting to order. There was uh, an agenda that was uh, uh, published for everyone to take a look. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda for today? Okay, I hear none. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Allen, Deputy Mayor. All in favor of that? That is carried. Okay, so moving forward then to uh, our next part of our agenda is open forum. And uh, Madam Clerk, uh, we have one person. Uh, thanks. Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, we did have one person register for open forum. Uh, unfortunately, the item that he wished to speak to is not an item on the agenda, so that is contrary to the procedure bylaw. And unfortunately, uh, there is nobody in attendance um, from the registration at the present time either. So. Okay. So so then basically we have nobody who's speaking at this time. That is correct. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, declaration of pecuniary interest. Is, uh, does anybody uh, on council have, have such a declaration to make? Deputy Mayor? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm looking for the item number, but there is a, a CIP application on the agenda today uh, that I have a conflict on uh, because it is a, sorry? Would that be 7.6? 7 7.6, 7 yes. Okay, that is the one. Uh, because it's an application uh, for my family's business. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Are there any other declaration of pecuniary interest to council? All right, so moving on then. And uh, just in case I don't see you, I'll keep screening back and forth. I'm using my phone to watch everybody while I use my iPad uh, for our information. So if I miss you, that's not intentionally, I'll keep screening back and forth. Um, I need uh, a mover for the minutes of, I guess that was the 16th of September, 2020. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Little, Councillor Allwood. Are there any errors or omissions on those sets of minutes? Okay, hearing none. Oh, okay. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I have a quick question of procedure. Uh, and I ask this because we do this at the county where um, closed minutes are approved in open session. Um, and I was just wondering if that was something we can do instead of having to wait for the next closed session before we can approve the minutes of a closed session meeting. Um, so yeah, it's a question of procedure more than anything else. So uh, Madam Clerk, uh, did you understand the question that the Deputy Mayor was raising? Yes, uh, Your Worship, thank you for that. Um, yes, it's definitely something we can do. There uh, was a lot of information previously um, brought forward um, in my previous employment just about how that works logistically. Um, the uh, closed session um, policy and documents would have to state that it is done in open session and that the, the, and that the minutes would remain uh, confidential even if done in open. That isn't something that we have put forward um, at the present time, but it is definitely a um, possibility. Okay. Any other questions to the minutes uh, of uh, 16th of August or September? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried, okay. Madam Clerk, there was no delegations or presentations. No, Your Worship. So I guess we'll then move on to items for council's consideration. It's uh, the first item is the, let me just pull it up here, is the purchase of the tablets for the uh, billing service. And uh, this is from uh, our chief of billing official, Debbie Anderson. Uh, can I have a, a, does somebody wish to move and second this um, at this time? Councillor Little, Councillor Allwood. 
Um, the report is there. I don't know, um, Debbie, uh, our chief building official, do you have anything to add to the report? Not hearing anything. Um, council, uh, discussion by council. Your worship, Director Benner is in attendance as the director that oversees uh, building as opposed to our CBO and he has popped up on the screen. Uh, okay, I just thought it was written by Debbie there. So, okay, go ahead, uh, uh, Mr. Brenner. Do you have anything to add to the report? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to uh, make a quick note that uh, we're bringing this report forward at this time. Uh, typically, this would be more of a, a budget matter, but I'm um, bringing this report in advance of the budget, given the high volume of building permits that... Uh, the building division is dealing with right now. The uh, we were able to purchase two uh, of the the tablets already through um, previous uh, previous approvals. Um, so half of our building staff have the the tablets and are finding them to be extremely useful. The the size of the tablet that we're working with at 12.9 inches is is larger than your typical tablet or even some of the smaller iPads. But the, the size and the re robustness of the uh, uh, iPad Pros are, um, are very useful to our building staff and, and other de build, building departments across the province who are using cloud permit have gone to this, this level of, of tablet simply because when you're out in the field, you can actually pull up the drawings, you can mark up the drawings. It works very, very seamlessly with the the cloud permit program and allows uh, our staff to be very efficient when they're actually out on the on the building site. Okay, and I take it they're Wi-Fi capable, so you don't need to like so they're live when you're out on site that they they have Wi-Fi connected. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. They have uh, Wi-Fi and cellular capabilities. Okay. Okay. Any uh, thank you for that, uh, the director of. Uh, Planning, um, Mr. Brenner, uh, any comments, questions from council? Just looking here on my phone. I see no comments. That's been moved by Council Little, second by Councilor Allwood. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Mr. Brenner, for that. Okay, and then moving forward then of item 7.2. Uh, the uh, Municipal Service Assistance Building and Planning. And I presume this is Mr. Brenner as, as well. So um, would somebody like to move this from council or do you wish to hear the report? I guess I'm getting like the county, we move it first, but uh, I don't know if anybody was like, would like to uh, move this. Deputy, okay, Deputy Mayor and Councillor Bellicat. Uh, so the Director of, uh, of Planning, Michael, do you have any comments uh, to this report? Silence is uh, <laughs> golden. <laughs> Madam CAO wishes. Okay, Madam CAO. Thank you, Your Worship. I was waving frank frantically. I know I'm um, using my phone, so I only have four pictures at a time. So just speak up and I'll get ah, you. Okay, thank you. Um, so, as Director Benes uh, spoke about the previous item, um, the staff in the building and planning departments are um, struggling with the amount of applications that are coming forward. Um, the and again, this it, this would normally be a budget request, uh, but given that it is predominantly funded through the building reserve. Um, and not really affecting the tax levy much, we thought it was prudent to go forward with it right away. Um, currently, the staff in both departments are putting in uh, between 50 and 60 hours overtime a week, um, which is uh, problematic because obviously that's putting a strain on our, our um, resources. And uh, given that it would be predominantly funded through the building reserve, we thought it was it was a good idea to go forward and, and um, get that position in place as soon as possible. Um, we do realize that um, as busy as they are today, we have a lot of building permits that are coming on the horizon with the recent uh, um, 
developments in uh, residential uh, properties and um, we're expecting by with talks in with uh, people uh, such as Devin Lee um, we're looking at a lot more on the horizon um, starting before the springtime of 2021 so they really do need that support now as opposed to waiting to spring to start to go out to start the hiring process okay so then I'll thank you for, for that, uh, Madam CEO. I'm going to go to the council. Uh, any councillors have any questions on, on the report? I know there was a few questions that were sent out earlier that was uh, staff were able to answer to, to council. Sorry, Councillor Allen. Um, yes, thank you. Not only is it coming out of the building reserve, but um, the building department, I would think everybody knows, is 100% is user pay. So all the money is, comes just from people taking out permits and um, the planning department isn't 100%, but it's probably 60% or higher user pay. So it isn't affecting the, the tax levy um, very much. Just wanted to add that. And I think we need to get Mayor McQueen another iPad a second one, so maybe an iPad Pro. There we go. I know the county is a next go around. They're looking at uh, laptops as well, and it's. Uh, I just find that it's when you have your document and you mark it all up, it, you can't look on the iPad and do your meeting. That's the problem, right? So, thanks for that comment, uh, Councillor Allen. Uh, any other comments? Then I'm going to get a bit of sun here. That today's very interesting. Sun, rain, thunderstorm. Any other comments? Okay. Um, okay, so there is no comments and that was moved by Deputy Mayor, second by Councilor Valiquette. All in favor of that uh, motion. That is correct. Thank you. Next one is uh, under the clerk's department and uh, for the municipal service assistant, oh, sorry, electronic participation and other meeting options is 7.3. Madam Clerk, do you have anything to add to your report? No, Your Worship, but I'm here to answer questions should anybody have any. Okay, are there any questions from Council? Give me a chance to flip over here. Councilor Little. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I did raise this question and um, I'm not sure that it um, was addressed to my satisfaction anyway. Um, maybe the way I expressed it, but if the, um, if the bylaw is pertaining to um, meeting, participating electronically when we're no longer in this um, pandemic state of emergency under normal, more normal circumstances, in this part of the province, we experience um, um, severe weather, you know, much of the time it's not an unusual occurrence. And, uh, you know, we have snow days, we have significant weather events uh, declared by the municipality. And the way the policy or the way the bylaw is worded is that um, this might be considered under extenuating circumstances, which would have to be determined, um, um, I guess, by the mayor in consultation with staff. Um, I'm just wondering if there is a more, um, a more proactive way of dealing with uh, severe weather events during the winter. In the past, we've had this happen and we've had to cancel or postpone a meeting and I would hate to see that happen. I just think um, maybe there should be some way of um, streamlining um, our response when that situation occurs so that we're not limited to only four members of council participating um, electronically. So those, those are my comments. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to the clerk, I guess, Madam Clerk. Or... Um, thank, thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, I did anticipate that that would fall under the extenuating circumstances under traffic impediments. When we have significant wet weather, um, our roads are not very safe to drive on, um, so that would would fall under extenuating circumstances. Under the policy, extenuating circumstances would be determined by the clerk 
in consultation with the chair. Um, so the mayor doesn't have to make that decision. Um, if it falls under one of um, those specific items, um, I believe that the chair would give delegated authority to the clerk to be able to say, yes, we'll go forward with that. And it would just be noted at the beginning of the meeting. Um, but um, if you would like, or if um, you would like an amendment to the policy to specifically state a weather section, um, just an amendment to the recommendation that is not yet on the floor or uh, a recommendation put forward in addition to the one um, presented, just saying um, that we either bring back the policy um, for approval, including a weather section, or that the um, policy be um, approved to include a, a weather section. Okay, I'm gonna, thank you for that, Madam Clerk. I'm gonna go back to Councillor Little again. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just see some other um, other members of council wish to speak, so I'll, um, I'll I'll wait for now. Okay, I just somehow, somehow I've lost my screen here. Can you still see me there? Nope. I'm not sure what happened here. Um, huh. Deputy Mayor, can you take over? And I'm going to sign back in again. Okay. Sounds good, uh, Councillor Allen. I've got you with your hand up. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, yeah, I had some of the same concerns as Councillor Little. And if we did, if we did add in a, a weather clause, um, there's still the restrictions on the number of people that can participate electronically. So that's one point. My other point is that um, it, it says somewhere um, about um, the pandemic um, about until it's over. It, it's, this isn't going to be over for quite a while. And I think it also states about a, a state of emergency. And I believe the province has already lifted their state of emergency. And I would think we would be doing the same. Maybe I'm wrong on that. I see some head shaking. But anyways, we could we could lift the state of emergency, but I think there's still um, probably some reluctance to sit in a 20 by 20 room with seven other people that you don't know who they're, although the bubble's getting smaller every week, but still, if, if we have to be in a, in a small room um, for four or five hours, with people that we don't know, the people that they're being um, or, or spending time with, I think there's there's a, a problem there. So I think we need to find out the comfort level of not only council, but, but staff. Um, and um, this, this could be the norm for quite a while. Um, so th those are, my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Councillor Nielsen and Councillor Valaked before I go to you, Madam Clerk, uh, and that way we'll have uh, a, a, a sort, sort of a full list of questions that the uh, clerk can respond to. So, Councillor Councillor Nielsen, I've got you next, and then Councillor Valaked. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I just said. Uh, a uh, thought um, trying to process Councillor Little's question and comments regarding um, weather. I know the theory would behind this policy would be that um, I'm guessing the clerk would have to, uh, for every council meeting for the foreseeable future, have a Zoom meeting set up. I'm just curious as to, um, seeing as this policy is going to be beyond the pandemic, if we're trying to transfer to a uh, a Zoom style meeting because of a weather event, uh, what is the timing the clerk needs to be able to make the decision? Uh, what is the efficiency and able to set that up? I wouldn't want to pressure staff to be running around and making sure things are set up so that we could have a council meeting rather than delaying the council meeting for the purposes of weather, which is a logical thing to do when we're trying to make sure everybody's safe and sound. Thank you for that, Councillor Nielsen. Councillor Valaket. <clears throat> yeah, I think um, 
thank you, uh, Chair, uh, Deputy Mayor. I think that there's a lot of things to think about with this, and, and particularly when we discuss, discuss timelines associated with the pandemic, I think there are, um, there are personal timelines that need, um, uh, need to be considered. So for example, um, I will uh, speak about my house. Um, uh, as I've mentioned uh, in the break, I was dealing with kids doing schooling. My entire home is, uh, household is home now. We have a, um, somebody who is um, has an immunity problem and COVID would be disastrous. So when we start to talk about timelines with this and um, getting back to work, the reality of the situation is that there are many people like myself who, you know, this this is a long haul. Um, very hard to explain to a seven year old, by the way. Um, so I, I do think that I have some concerns about caps on who can attend. Um, I would not want to be in a situation where we're like, oh, don't worry, I'll, I'll be the one that takes, um, takes the danger of the road and the snow to go in, uh, that, you know, that kind of stuff doesn't make sense to me. So I just, I just wanted to put that in uh, that bug in everybody's ear. Thank you, Councillor Valiquette. Madam Clerk, there was a few questions raised in the uh, course of this discussion. I'm, I'm going to give you an opportunity to, to go ahead and address those. Um, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. So the first one I'm going to discuss is Councillor Allen's question uh, regarding uh, pandemic versus emergencies and the numbers associated. So I specifically did not uh, mention during the declared emergency in the resolution, um, simply because as you had mentioned, the pro provincial government has <coughs> lifted their declaration of emergency. Um, however, the social distancing limits, um, the distances, all of those things remain because we are still in a pandemic. So I think there might be a little bit of confusion about the numbers that are required. Um, during the pandemic, no more than four in attendance because it's the only way we can maintain a good social distancing between. After the pandemic is over and so social distancing limits are lifted because it's deemed that the pandemic is over, then you can have um, more than four, but no less than three in attendance. So it's, we have to look at these as completely separate and apart. Um, however, in hindsight, um, based on the comments that I'm receiving, there may be a little bit of confusion because I joined them all in, because I was looking at this, um, because I had to figure out the hybrid model and how it could be used during the pandemic and then how it could continue after because of um, the uh, legislation that was passed and the resolution from council directing me to do so. As far as uh, Councillor Nielsen's question with Zoom meetings forever, yes, there will be a Zoom meeting set up for every single meeting here on out. And that is not only to, to facilitate the pandemic hybrid, but it will also facilitate for accessibility for the members of our public who may wish to um, delegate electronically, who may wish to um, join open forum electronically. It's not simply just for council members, but that Zoom connectivity will have to continue on forever. So that will already be set up. So if there was an extenuating circumstance like a weather event, it's literally just adding the panelists into that as opposed to having to start from scratch and set up. Um, and then with uh, uh, Councillor Valaket's timelines, um, I think I mentioned that when I responded to Councillor Allen's. If I've missed any specific queries or want me to expand on anything, please let me know. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. Um, Mayor McQueen. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. And uh, the, the comment I made, I know that the, um, the uh, county was looking at a hybrid itself and, and when they were looking at going back, but then that's now changed for tomorrow. I guess the question I have is um, if we're able to have participation in electronic meetings and certainly, um, uh, you know, moving past the, the uh, pandemic situation and having that in place. I, I, I appreciate the comments that Councillor Little is making with regards to weather events. And there's, there's been a few over the years that uh, I've been mayor where the council has been council canceled because of weather related. And this could be an option provided those that, um, that run this meeting are able to get to the office uh, and to run those meetings, that would be the exception because I know sometimes uh, to run the Zoom meeting, I'm not sure if you can run the Zoom meeting from home, um, Madam Clerk or staff, uh, 
that's something I, I guess you need clarity on that. And the other thing is, is I think we've always been told if, if we are sick or, you know, not, uh, you know, not feeling well, uh, not to go into the office, not to go in with other people, is that an opportunity to still participate electronically in a council meeting, but you just don't want to spread whatever you got with your fellow colleagues versus going into council and stuff like that. So is that another option if um, you, you can't attend for whatever reason, and maybe it's just not because you're sick or whatever uh, circumstances that still, still are allowing you to participate, you know, as a, an active counselor, but you don't want to, there's other reasons why it's, it's probably wise that you don't go to, um, to those meetings, whether it's a road close or you're not feeling well, or there's other reasons or is maybe what counselor about is, is there, is there some leeway that we can work in there that it does have that flexibility? I know we had this conversation at the County. Most cases people want to be part of a meeting, but I think it's always good if there's flexibility for, for those good reasons why maybe somebody shouldn't go or can't go. Just a comment, Madam Clerk. I don't know if you had a comment, sir. Thank you, Mayor McQueen. Um, I'm going to go to the clerk and then Councillor Valiquette, I think, had her hand up, and Councillor Nielsen. Okay, so the clerk um, and then Councillor Nielsen. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, through you to Mayor McQueen. So, um, yes, we can run the Zoom meetings from home. We did that during up until September because I was solely from home up until that point, um, and the meetings were all run from home. In relation to um, the electronic meeting participation beyond the pandemic, there you don't have to have a reason to join electronically. Um, with the advance notice, as long as we, the, and the, the reason that I'm saying that we would like to have at least three people in council chambers is because sometimes we have delegations from the public who want to see you face to face. And it would be quite disheartening for them to come in to meet with council face to face and have less than three people for them to talk to and they're talking to a screen. Um, so it was trying to find that balance with allowing the, um, allowing people to attend remotely with our members, but not having everybody decide they're never going to attend in person again, because as much as we are providing that accessibility for people that can't come in, we need to provide that accessibility for people that want to come in as well. Thank you. Uh, I'll just, I'll just mention if you don't come in, uh, you don't get cookies from the, from the Rockland folks. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but it was either last year or the year before, they came in with uh, really delicious baked goods. So you don't get those if you're attending virtually. Councillor Nielsen. <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, uh, I guess one more question I had just for uh, Madam Clerk and, and I guess the rest of council. If we are contemplating a hybrid approach during what's gonna be left of this pandemic situation, which we all know will last a while, um, you know, Madam Clerk saying four max, I would want to make sure that those who want to get in there do. So what is the protocol that we're going to take? Um, for one, to be honest, I miss all of you guys so much. So I don't <laughs> like the Zoom. I really, I really, um, I, I miss that interaction. I miss being able to see each other's faces and mm -hmm. talk to each other. But I respect situations like Councillor Valiquette where she does not want to come in. I have, um, it seems like, just fine internet service for my home. We have members who don't have the greatest internet service. Perhaps they're better off in the office. So uh, I just kind of throwing it out there to uh, my fellow counselors as to uh, what is the protocol that we might want to take in terms of who will be the ones in and out of the office. And Madam Clerk's already thinking about that one. So we, we called dibs and I called dibs first, uh, but Madam Clerk, I'll let you give a more official answer. <laughs> um, through you, Chair Desai, I have already thought about this. It's like children in the playground who gets to ride the tricycle first. Um, uh, basically, the plan would be that the mayor or the chair for the meeting um, would have first dibs and would almost be required to be in council chambers whenever possible. And the remaining seats, what we would do, would we, we would um, poll each of you and find out who wants to come back. If there is more than four that want to come back, we will do a rotation and we will set up a schedule for a rotation. If there's an extenuating circumstance that comes up and say Councillor Nielsen is on that rotation and Councillor Allwood isn't, then we would allow that switch to occur. But it, it will take a little bit of coordination, but we've already thought of it. All right, perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Little. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Mayor. So is there any circumstance where 
um, because the uh, policies or the bylaw stated, proposed bylaw states first come first served, um, and you're saying that it could be a rotation. Is there any circumstance where a member wanted to participate electronically and was prevented from doing so? Madam Clerk? Um, if I recall correctly, the first come first served is for beyond the pandemic, um, for the maximum to be out, not during the pandemic. Um, and in that case, an extenuating circumstance would um, definitely take precedence over somebody who just wanted to. Um, and that's where the clerk would make that discretion in coordination with the chair. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Councillor Allen, I did skip over you. I apologize. You have the floor. Thank you. Um, so my first question then is, is for the clerk, could you define, you said when the pandemic is over, when do you, what, what, um, what do you consider? How will you know? Is it when there's a vaccine? Like, so I'll go on to my second point and then you can answer that question. I'm not, I'm not paranoid about this, COVID-19. I'm out and about. I'm building a house. I go to the bakery. I go to stores. I'm wearing my mask and that's, you know, I keep my distance. But I'm in control of what and what I do and where I go and who I come not into contact with, but who I'm near. And again, I, I don't like the idea of, of having to be somewhere that I'm not comfortable with. So the pandemic, um, if you're talking about when there's zero cases in Canada for three weeks, then, you know, I'm probably fine with that, but <laughs> not while we still need to wear masks and social distance. I don't think that's a fair question to ask the clerk. Matt what the definition the madam, of the pandemic. The Madam Clerk wrote this policy, yeah. yeah. I, I'm sure she's thought of it. I sure have. So our definition or what we've deemed to be the end of the pandemic is when all restrictions are lifted, when there is no longer the need to social distance, when the province has determined that um, there's no more having to wear masks out in public. When you're allowed to do your social gathering, there's no more limits imposed. Um, as far as we're, as far as I'm concerned, that would be deemed that the pandemic would be over. Um, I am not a health health official. I am not. Uh, I can't. I don't have a crystal ball. I have no idea when that is. And that's why we use the term um, during the pandemic versus. Um, versus during the declared state of emergency because a de declared state of emergency looks completely different because we could end the declaration of emergency but still be required to wear masks. Um, the public health for the province and for Canada has will be determining when they're going to lift the restrictions imposed on the residents of um, the province and the country and they won't do that until they've deemed the pandemic to be uh, complete or us to be out of the pandemic version and that's what we would follow as well. Thank you. Um, follow up? Yeah so okay so that's I'm sure the government is going to err on the side of caution really err on the side of caution so <laughs> if if that's if that's the case then then that um, that addresses all of my concerns. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor Allen. Councillor Lill, did you have your hand up? Thank you, Mr. Chair, um, or designated chair. Um, yeah, I think um, I just didn't want to see somebody um, prevented because of numbers from participating. Mm -hmm. I agree with uh, Councillor Nielsen that we all want to be back in the council chamber with our colleagues, staff, fellow members of council, that's the desired situation. And um, I appreciate uh, Councillor Allen saying that our circumstances are different. Fair enough, thank you very much, Councillor Little. Mayor McQueen, you had your hand up. 
Yeah, I just uh, I think it's going to be interesting how we move through just in, in a general sense with this pandemic, because the common cold is the common cold that's with us. The the flu every fall we get it goes around, so it may come to the point where uh, it's 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 at a manageable level that um, you know it's at that level when, as the clerk said, that those uh, items are raised or, or lifted, but it may not be completely eradicated in the sense of the COVID nineteen. It it may still be out there, just like smallpox and and other other type of things that has been in the past. So. But I think I would agree with what the clerk is said, saying is, is there's probably it has to get to that normal, back to normal before we ever get past uh, a pandemic. And uh, but I, I would want to say that as far as cases goes, that could still be out there as time because it's they're talking about vaccination and that may take, you know, till that comes out and not everybody's going to jump up there and get that. But that's a whole different discussion that I'll, I'll leave it at that. But uh Anyway, it, we all we all see it differently, and, and it's it's we're all in this together, as they keep telling us, mm -hmm. and we'll move forward. Yep. <laughs> uh, Madam Clerk, you had your hand up. Yeah, just uh, as final thoughts, I do want to reiterate the clarity that um, during the pandemic, no one has to come into council chambers. You do not have to come into council chambers. No one has to come into council chambers during the pandemic. We just have no more than four of you are allowed to just because of the social distancing. So you don't have to, don't feel the need to come into council chambers just because you're allowed to. Um, you can continue on the way that we're going during the pandemic for sure. We've got Thank it down you. to a science now. Perfect. Uh, I still would like to get back in council chamber. It's uh, gets me out of the house. Uh, <laughs> is there any further discussion on this? Okay, uh, um, Councillor Nielsen. Sorry, thank you very much, Deputy Mayor. Um, just one final question, and I and forgive me if I miss it in the report itself. If we follow through with the recommendation, when would that hybrid model be uh, starting? Madam Clerk. Uh, we are hoping to get have everything in place uh, fully and completely um, by November 1st. Amazing. And um, all right. Well, seeing no further question or discussion, um, can you help me out with who the mover and the seconder was, Madam Clerk? There was none. There was none. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, can I have a mover and a seconder? Councillor Valaket, do I have someone seconding the motion as presented? Councillor Allwood, thank you. Um, I'll put out a last call for any further debate. All right. Seeing none, all those in favor? Those opposed, that's carried. Um, Mayor McQueen, I'll hand the chair back over to you. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor, and thanks for taking over that. And I, yeah, I, I threw you a little bit. I didn't, I didn't ask for a move in a second because I knew there was a bit of discussion on that one, so I left that one. And uh, anyway, I caught you. And just, I guess, one comment to that, Madam Clerk. I guess this being passed, uh, other than people watching this meeting today, there will be some communication going out that will explain that because I think that's also important because when when we get to that part, people will be going, what's going on, <laughs> right? So we'll still be in the screen. We'll still be, we'll still be visible, right? So anyway, I, I know you look after that stuff, so that's good. Okay, again, thank you, Deputy Mayor. All right, moving on then to our next item is the 7.4. This is with regards to the update sale and disposition of land policy and if i recall this is between you and the, uh, yeah, this is you madam clerk so um is there a mover and seconder for this one or do you wish to have a discussion first you know i'm not asking if you don't feel it you can have discussion first i just i just go out there and just one step i don't uh, want to miss so okay questions i don't see anybody jumping there so questions councillor little and deputy mayor sorry i was just going to move it your worship oh you were okay councillor little is there a seconder I'll, I'll second. I still have questions, but I'll second. All right, go ahead, uh, Deputy Mayor. And then Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, uh, my, so I've got, I've got a couple of questions, and I'll just go through them, uh, if that's okay. Um, my okay. first question was under uh, scope. It doesn't include council in there, and I feel like it, it would be appropriate to include council under the scope of this policy. Um, 
I wanted so I wanted to I guess I wanted to get some input from the clerk on that on uh, whether it would be appropriate or not, and then following that I'll, I I might make a, 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 an amendment to the policy. The second uh, question that I had was under Section Three, uh, uh, Subsection A, uh, Point Three. Uh, there's a, a phrase that's used, which is the best interests of the municipality. I think that phrase, it, it, it doesn't quantify something. And is there a way to provide more clarity on that particular uh, sentence? And um, yeah, th those are my questions. Uh, those two are my questions. Thank you. Okay, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> Go ahead, Madam Clerk. Um, through your worship um, to Deputy Mayor Desai, it can include scope. Um, however, it is staff that is following the policy and bringing things forward to council. Um, that's why council was omitted, but there's no, nothing saying that council can't be added. Um, in relation to 3A3, um, the best interest of the municipality is kind of, open-ended but it does provide some guidance i don't know what other terminology you would use it is in relation to allowing um, property to go at less than market value so this would be things in best interest it would affect the community as a whole it would be for the betterment of the municipality i don't know what else you would say i mean you obviously can't say if we give this road allowance to um, joe smith then they, um, that's for the betterment of the municipality. That obviously doesn't fly. It has to be for something, um, if there's a, a park or there's something, uh, a health unit, a health, something that would be for the benefit of the community. Um, if, if you have different options for wording for that, I am open to hear them. Deputy Mayor. Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, I, I take the points quite well on 3A3. I just wondered if maybe there was a better way to sort of uh, put that, but I, I don't have solutions of my own there. Uh, with regards to the scope, um, so this this relates back to 3A3 a little bit. The, re the reason I'd like council to be in included in the scope is that there, there are sections in this that apply to council. For example, um, council is, is, um, is authorized, I guess, uh, under 3A3. Council may authorize the disposal of real property at less than market value if, in its opinion, it is in the best interest of the municipality to do so. So I, I feel like there's points like that which adhere to council, which is why I'd like to see council uh, included in the in the scope. Um, and so I, I, um, I guess before we go on to the main motion, um, I, I would like to uh, propose amend the presented policy. Uh, by adding, by including council in uh, in the scope of the policy. Madam Clerk, is that a friendly amendment, or is that something you need to have in the motion? Uh, Your Worship, technically, there's no such thing as a friendly amendment, so we're going to do it as a, an amendment. Okay, I just thought it was just a wordsmithing. <laughs> okay, so that's including that. Will that be included in the motion that you're moving, or does that have to be a separate uh, amendment to the motion? Or should we wait till there's other other discussions before we get to an amendment to the motion? Because it is moved by council uh, and second by yourself. Yeah, um, I, I'm willing to wait uh, to see if there's any further amendments that come up and then we can uh, do one omnibus motion for all the amendments. Okay, that sounds good. We'll come back to that then. I uh, council a little and then Councilor Nielsen, I think was next. I'm just trying to quickly find find it, Your Worship, um, but I think it's in the Municipal Act um, about the role the role of um, members of council, and it does talk about the best interests of the municipality. So it's it's not um, an unusual term. I think it fits in with the Municipal Act, and uh, you know how we would define it as as performing our role. I think would be how we would define it as um, you know as applied in this um, draft um, bylaw. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Nielsen, did you have a question? No? No. Okay, was there any further other questions then? Um, a couple of questions I had, Madam Clerk, um, was on advertising. Uh, you do say in there, 
mailing a notice up to a budding property owners or posting in a newspaper of general circulation. I know it's always been raised to me or others that um, there are certain um, individuals in our community that don't have internet or don't have the ability to access computers um, to you know get emails or get or to access uh, that type of thing. That may change as time goes on. I just, I, you know, it's always raised to me. Well, what's wrong with the paper? And I, I see it says there or posting in in a newspaper. I know we do have that half page ad that we do currently. I would presume because we currently use the paper for that, that it, there would be an ad put in there. Do you have any comments to that? Because that, that is something that I think there's a stat out there that there is a certain percentage. Now, you know, some of those that aren't have access, they do use the library. But then again, during this pandemic situation, those aren't, those people haven't been able to use the library as well. So uh, any thoughts to that? Uh, certainly, Your Worship. If you notice under Section F, it does say by two or more of the uh, following methods. So it's not just one or the other, it has to be two or more of the following methods. So one posting a sign, mailing notice, municipal website and or social media, um, posting on social media. So there is that, there, there will always be an online and an either a newspaper or on the, on the property notice for that. And the reason it's, it's two of the three is simply because um, Obviously, if you're choosing one of just posting it on the property and the property is in the middle of nowhere, nobody will see that. So we would make right. that determination that it needs to go in the paper as well. Um, those kinds of little determining factors that um, that may be beneficial. OK, well, I, I know that the, the staff is, is good judgment. I just I always do get the comments come back from the, the public in the sense that there are certain, you know, they do like that paper form and i and i'm sure you appreciate that as well well and we didn't want to put just that all of them because if the website was down or we don't have the social media then those are moot points so we wanted to make sure we had at least two methods of uh, notice being provided for this who knows you could use them all if you did because it's at your discretion right good yep two and, or more and the other question i had <clears throat> just before i go to council a little was um under road allowance uh i mean I got to go back to my marked up screen. I learned this from Council Little to mark up your screen. So I, I've been practicing that. Um, but it goes into here, it says, uh, road allowances for future needs. The municipality of Gray Highlands, um, uh, hang on. the municipality of Gray Highlands shall generally deem all road allowances to be required for future needs, regardless of whether the needs are known at the present time. I guess my question there, and you probably have the answer for this, different times we get requests to to surplus a road allowance or or whatever does that mean we we can't still get that request or where is that process if there is a request to purchase a, a road allowance it has to go through the process of deeming it surplus and determining that but is there a process for that because i know we get that um that question all the time um through your worship so the reason that that's put in there is previously well before my time well before our current director's time, there was an indication from that um, from previous councils, and I, I honestly don't know off the top of my head when that was, was that we would not dispose of road allowances because you never know when you may need them. So right. that was simply incorporated into this. So if there is a general discussion, if somebody contacts a member of staff and is inquiring about a road allowance, we can say, well, we generally will not dispose of them. However, let's put it through the process and see what council, uh, council has to say about this specific one. But our general response is that we generally don't. So if somebody is just kicking tires and whatever, right. we, you know what I mean? If they're really not that interested and, or those kinds of things, we, we have that to let them know that we don't know when we may need this down the future. So we generally don't let them go, but it is ultimately council's decision. So let's put it through the process and see what happens. So then that process is that people, if, they, if they're serious, can still go through a process yes. of making it. Okay. I, I, all the years have I been on council, I've only been, I've only been uh, privy to one, uh, stopping, closing up, and going through the public process. And what that ended up being was a third was given to the one owner, the, the third was given to the other owner. And then it, because the, the I think it was, it was in St. Hampton and the lots were undersized, then it enabled a home to be built because of the setbacks and all that kind of stuff. But it was a, it was a road allowance that just basically was was at the time deemed 
not need because there was there's lots of other accesses to get to other points that were available so um anyway that's 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 the questions i have okay councillor little you had a question thank you for that thank you your worship it was under three b one which is the disposal of road allowances and honestly it was i found it hard to wrap my head around what this was communicating, um, except that it did make sense when I thought of it in terms of if it was like a larger development, like a subdivision or um, some industrial um, area, like it, it doesn't seem to, uh, I guess my question is, is that, is that a valid interpretation that it's more of a, for a larger development or a, a developer? Yes, so if a large development was to come in, sorry, through your worship, if a large development was to come in and the property that they were purchasing has road allowances, um, bisecting it, going through it, those kinds of things, we could then transfer those road allowances to the development, knowing that roads would be coming back to the municipality once they were developed and, and meet municipal standards. Okay. I, I, the only example I know of that is is in uh, Alliston where Honda was building their factory and they wanted to expand and there was a road. So basically they sold, they stopped up and sold the road to Honda and then Honda created a new road beside it. Right. So that's the example there. Okay. Other questions? Uh, we do have a move by Councilor Little and Deputy Mayor. Are there any other questions? I see no, none. Oh. Mayor, go ahead. Uh, at this point, I would like to um, make the right. amendment to the policy on adding uh, council into the scope of the uh, policy, and I'll move that amendment. Okay, thank you for that. Do I have a seconder to that amendment? Just looking here to see if there's a seconder here. I'm looking through my phone here. <laughs> okay, Councilor Nielsen. All right. So the, the amendment is to, to allow that wording. Does everybody understand the intent of the amendment? Any, any questions to that, this motion? Um, so I'll just read that, Your Worship. That the, main ahead, motion, that the main motion be amended by replacing as presented with as amended by including council in the scope. Okay. Thank you for that clarity. Uh, uh, any questions from council? Councilor Little. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, to be honest, I don't really understand why this is going in here. Um, it does say in the previous uh, sentence, the beginning, that um, that this is the policy unless waived by council. So I think staff is, is acting on the direction provided by this policy that council approves. And there could be um, a, a situation where council would want to waive it, but I don't really understand the benefit of adding council into that second sentence. I maybe the mover could explain to me. At this point, I'm I'm um, I'm not looking to support it because I don't really understand the reason. So, Deputy Mayor, do you have a little uh, further uh, explanation? <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Your Worship. Uh, part of it is uh, is the, the transparency of it. I, I, I know it, it would imply that it, it applies to us as well, uh, the, the scope of this policy. It just doesn't say it in there. So uh, even from an optics perspective for a layperson reading this, uh, it would lead them to question uh, why council is not included in the scope of it. And that's the, that's the only reason that I am uh, putting it forward. Okay, further uh, question, Councillor Little on that? Okay, other questions from councillors? Councillor Alwick. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I was wondering why uh, the mover wasn't uh, satisfied that under the Appendix A 2F, uh, you know, the report to council that basically outlines council's responsibilities in the policy doesn't cover off what you're concerned about. So what was that reference again? What's which, which item? It's Appendix A procedure, I think, uh, 2F, the report to council. Council will approve the final disposition of any real property. It's the last point in it. But the... Right, I got you. Okay, Deputy Mayor, do you have a comment to that? 
Thank you, uh, Your Worship. So as, as Councillor Allwood uh, 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 said, the Appendix 2F relates to staff's duty to counsel uh, on this policy. Um, my intent of the amendment was to uh, show that the, the policy applied to council as well as the people listed in the scope. And um, I, I don't think I have a further answer for Councillor Albert. <laughs> okay. Further on that, Councillor Albert, or do you have any further comment? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I, I'm, I'm still a little... Uh, confused as why we need to include it in the scope, but uh, I'll listen to what other people have to say about that for the moment. Okay, Councillor Allen, did you have a question? I think you sort of rose to the occasion there. And <laughs> yes, um, I think, isn't that just saying that if council makes the decision to sell a street that we give permission to either staff and it could be the CAO or somebody else, or it could be um, a, a company that sells property. It could be a real estate agent. Isn't that all it's saying that once we make the decision, we, we're uh, giving those people the, like, we don't need that. We don't need to be giving ourselves permission. I think that's, am I reading it wrong or? Madam Clerk, do you have a, a bit of interpretation there or to what Councillor Allen is saying? Uh, what section were you referring to, Councillor Allen? I'm just trying to pull it up here. Just, just under the scope that the Deputy Mayor is worried about. Um, at the end okay. of the day, whether Council is put into it or not, it really doesn't make any difference. All policies are adopted by Council, so they're Council policies um, and deemed to be the policies of the municipality um, because I see where Deputy Mayor is coming from just because council is referenced specifically that he would like to see them in the scope. Um, it really doesn't make a difference one way or the other. We're just adding a little bit more clarity, I guess. Deputy Mayor, do you have a response to that? Um, I, I can see where um, uh, Councillor Allen is coming from. And to be frank, I hadn't I hadn't read it that way, um, and I'm you know I'm quite happy if the secretary is okay with it to withdraw the amendment. I think okay, and I think the I think the clerk added a rule. Did you would you just say again? I was, Deputy, I was thinking. Deputy Mayor said he withdraws his amendment. However, it has been moved and seconded, so it is already in the hands of council. Well, that's that's what I thought. I, I just caught what he just said there. He sort of mumbled there, and I go, "What?" Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was going uh, to say that. Sorry, I thought you were. Um, no, so I said if it's okay with the uh, with the seconder, I, I will withdraw uh, but my it, uh, my amendment. It, once once you uh, once you start going down the hill in the toboggan, you can't turn around, buddy. <laughs> well, you, you can sort of drift onto the side. I don't know. I've never toboggan it. I think Shouldn't you can get down that. <laughs> I think I think the core guy actually added a, a, a little more clarity to what you were trying to do in the sense of it just yeah it just adds more clarity so yeah yeah um, so I'll, I'll I'll leave it out there and we'll see where it goes okay uh, any last comments I know that uh, the day's going on here so I don't see any others wishing to speak to it okay so uh, this is a motion um, with regards to the amendment to the, the to the main motion. Uh, Everybody has heard the mo uh, the amended motion. Um, all those in favor of the amended motion. Okay, I, I got to go through here and I got to see who's all got their hands up. Uh, hang on. It, it was just me, Your Worship. It was just me. Oh, okay. I guess that motion's last then. <laughs> all right. So we have the main motion. The, the toboggan crash there, Deputy Mayor. <laughs> uh, the main motion here is moved by Councillor Little, second by Deputy Mayor. Any further discussion on the main motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Oh, two hands there, that's carried. Okay, great. See, Deputy Mayor and, and Councillor Nielsen, necessarily we're in the same room, but we can have fun together, right? <laughs> all right. 
getting back to uh, our seriousness of what we normally have here, uh, we'll go on to item 7.5. And this is with regards to um, uh, some CIPs. And uh, we have a number of a few here that have applied. The motion is pretty straightforward. I, I, uh, I'm looking at this as being uh, uh, Michelle, is that right? Do we, would somebody like to move this right away or Councilor Little, do we have a second? Councilor Valley Cat. My uh, computer is slow loading up here. Um, Michelle, do you have anything to add to, uh, to your uh, reports here? Or? Sure. No, I think they're pretty straightforward in the committee um, or the pre-consultation committee with our team of staff members always reviews these very, very thoroughly. Okay. I think I got that. Question of clarity, sir? Uh, you're clear. Go ahead, Councillor Nielsen. Just a thing, Mr. Mayor, just a question to um, Director Harris. I My screen isn't bringing it up. Um, it's showing that by approving this, we're going to dip into the CIP reserves. I'm trying to just remember that the CIP reserves weren't, I'm just confirming that money was there because we put it over to the retro grant stuff. And then now we're going to pull it back into the CIP. Is that how that's working? Is that where that reserve came from? Forgive me. I just can't remember where the reserve built up from. Thank you, um, Councillor Nielsen, through the mayor to you and the rest of council. Last year was the first year that we introduced the CIP. The uptake was very slow on it. So the funds that were allocated last year were moved into reserve. And we'd like, we're requesting that we go back into that reserve to pull out because we, we are very well subscribed this year. And we hate to discourage this impetus that's moving forward. Thank you very much. And I did talk about it in the Sweeney report. All right. Any other questions into this? Thanks, Michelle. I don't see any other questions. Uh, motion has been moved by Council Little, second by Councilor Valiquette. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. All right. Item 7.6. Deputy Mayor, are you declaring a, a conflict on this one? I'm going to walk away. All right, so again, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, Michelle is here for questions. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Pencil Valley Cat. Let me switch my screen. Oops, wrong way. Uh, seconder by Council Little. Sorry, guys, I, I missed you on that screen. Okay, so any uh, any questions to this uh, this particular CIP? Okay, I don't hear any. All in favor? That is carried. All right, uh, Deputy Mayor, you can hear me. Come on back. Item 7.7 7, uh, with regards to some uh, development charges. Um, any comments to that before I ask for a mover and a seconder? Somebody like to, Councillor, do you wish to move it, Councillor Allen? I had a question. Okay, go ahead. Um, so these permits <laughs> have already, <laughs> been, these permits have already been taken out. Is that? I'm assuming. Uh, so I guess this will be for uh, Krista, who is, is that Michael or Michelle? I would be. Okay, Michelle. I, I'm certain they have Krista. Are you on the line? I am. I'm right here. Okay. There you go. I'll let Krista handle it. Good afternoon, Krista. You hear the question? Good afternoon. Uh, through you, Mayor, to uh, Councillor Allen. The permits have been applied for, but they haven't been granted yet. And that's based on my conversations with the chief building official. So is this the cart before the horse or... Um, no, I don't think so. It's, it's, it's part of the process. Um, they're aware of the program and have their applications in and, and supporting information and it's all hand in hand. It's all kind of tandem. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, I could ask Deputy Mayor of the back who's sitting up the street there, but uh, um, <laughs> if they're waiting, I don't know. But obviously they have to go through the process. Um, any other questions or... 
Uh, seeing none, can I have a mover, please? The Councilor Allred, second by, second by Deputy Mayor. Okay, so I got Councilor Allred, Council Deputy Mayor. Um, just a quick question, uh, maybe to you, Michelle or, or Krista. How many have applied so far? Krista, do you want to take that one or shall I? I was actually just pulling up my document to, uh, to confirm. I do believe um, that with council approval of these four, there will be six um, development charge reimbursement grants in total so far, but we are anticipating several more. Uh, I've been in contact with several um, potential applicants and we do expect more before the end of the year. Okay, and just for clarity and maybe just following up with Councillor Allen, if somebody has made an application and paid their fees and then realized Oh, there's a grant. Are they able to go back or is it, or they have to apply before they take the building permit? I think maybe that's where Councillor Allen was, was asking maybe. Yeah, it's my understanding of the process that uh, whereas this is a reimbursement grant, um, people okay. can apply for, um, for the grant and no money is dispersed until uh, the structure or the residential structure, sorry, is substantially complete as deemed by our building department. Okay. So they have to make the initi initiative before they get uh, the break. Okay, well, very good. And I think we had 400, I, thought, I think I read in the port report that I remember it's 400,000 that we sort of set aside. So this would equal to 24,000 with, right, with the four plus the two before, is that correct? You said six, right? Yep, that's correct. Yeah. And so there right now is sitting 376,000 in that that's particular right. budget line. That's right, I saw that. So Lots okay. more development. Right. And that expires, what's that, when's that expire? It, it was approved by council to the end of this year. So right. December 31st. December 31st. Okay, thank you very much for that clarity, Krista. There may be other questions. Councilor Nielsen. Just a quick question for memory's sake um, to um, Krista. We had a limit on for the <clears throat> subdivisions or per applicant, right? Was it, can you remind me which the number was, sorry? Yep, it was a maximum of 20 per phase yeah. of development. Okay, I wasn't uh, mistaken, but memory serves me right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Councilor Allen, do you have a question? Go ahead. Um, actually, that brings up a question. The um, per, per phase of development. So if you, Sunfield and Devonley are the same development, correct? So it's not per developer, it's per phase of development. So phase one of Stonebrook would, would be Devon Lee and Sunfield. Is that correct? Um, I actually thought they were, I, I do stand to be corrected. I, I did think they were two separate developers. Separate developers, but not separate development. And the, and the I'm getting feedback somewhere. So so we're, it's fine right now. There's only four because Devin Lee hasn't applied for any, but any, but it is, it is, I believe, per development, per phase of development, not per phase of developer. Or per developers, yeah. So, uh, Michelle, do you want to add some clarity to that? Because that's important. That's an important part moving forward here, uh, Michelle. Michelle. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. In fact, I was going to seek clarity from Council on this one because, as you know, when this went into, uh, when we developed this grant reimbursement, we hadn't looked at a, a development that was on the books being split um, between two developers. Originally, it was the intention, as we understood it, was that this was going to be one development and um, maybe this is a something that council will or would like to discuss further and maybe provide some further clarity on just so we're all clear as we start to get these requests. Councillor Allen, do you wish to add to that? Yeah, I'm just thinking about um, Devon Lee or even Stonebrook, they could sell properties to well, let, let's say Devon Lee has 400 units. 
they could sell to um, what is what is that? I should have used easier numbers, but they could sell to to twenty or thirty different developers, different blocks, and that would mean that each one could have twenty. So that wasn't the intention. The intention that that Stonebrook is uh, started out as three phases. I think it's down to two phases. So regardless of who builds the houses, it's based on, in my thinking, based on each phase of the development, which there are two phases. Okay. So, so just before I go on to other questions, I, I, I think it, oh, I'm gonna get clarity maybe from the CAO before I go back to you, Councillor Nielsen, okay? So Madam CAO. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to uh, the rest of Council, um, I believe Councillor Allen is correct. When we went through the discussions on the um, reimbursement for the grant, it was based on development. I think it's important to note that Devon Lee and Sunfield are builders, and we refer to the development phases. So given the fact that we do have two builders in one development phase, um, it would be first come first served. So they could all apply for the grant, but the grants would only be awarded as, um, as Krista referred to, uh, it is when our CBO says that the buildings are substantially complete. So they can all apply, but it, given that there's only 20 per phase, it would be basically the first 20 permits that are substantially complete. And the first 20 that get applied for, and then, and then they're gone, and there's no more left for that development. For that phase, your worship, yeah. So it, regardless of which builder applies, there's 20 per phase. So we better make sure uh, then, just before I go to other councillors' questions, through you, Madam CAO, and what Krista was asking or Michelle, if we need to add clarity, is it in your mind clear enough that we don't, council doesn't need to step into this anymore? Or, or if, if so, we better add that clarity really soon because we don't wanna all of a sudden have confusion out there. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I believe it is clear. Um, based, um, I mean, uh, initially I did write the wording and um, we did have a lot of discussion, a discussion at the at the cow meeting, and then subsequently at council on the matter. Um, I think it is clear. I think it, it's just um, uh, perhaps just defining the interpretation, and um, I could I can work with staff with that. If we okay. if we run into any other extenuating circumstances, we can always bring it back to council. But I think in this particular instance, it is clear. Okay, that's good. Uh, Councillor Allen, do you have anything to add there before I go to Councillor Nielsen? <clears throat> okay, good. thank you for that. Councillor Nielsen? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm on the same page as uh, Madam CAO and Councillor Allen. The um, concept was to ensure that um, a single developer wasn't able to uh, maximize the use of this uh, DC grant that we, we awarded so <clears throat> or we put in place so that um, it was set to the phase of the development, not necessarily the developer. So I'm, I, uh, I like the CAO's interpretation and think that could be followed through by staff. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Councilor Nielsen. Any other, Councilor Bellicette? If you, you just joined, maybe you're slipping out there. Uh, is there any other questions from councilors? Okay, well, thanks, uh, Councilor Allen for raising that because it is important that clarity is, is uh, there and and to uh, Krista, now, Krista, do you have any or Michelle, do you have any further questions? Because I know it's obviously it's your it's your department that's, department that's uh, yeah, dealing with dealing this. With so do you have any comments? No, I think um, the CAO provided clarity for us, which is great. Great. Okay. Super. Well, that's good that we got that uh, um, out there and and that's made that clarity because uh, nothing worse than having something head in the wrong direction, not clear with clarity. Okay, so the mover uh, is Councillor Allwood, second by Deputy Mayor. Are there any other discussions on this 7.7 uh, motion? Seeing that, all in favor? I think that's carried. Okay. 
How are we doing for time? Everybody still okay? Okay, maybe we'll go to 2.30 and... Okay, so um, the next item is the, uh, the Flesherton uh, Arena rental rates uh, during COVID. And uh, as I read this, there's, not, there's, a, there's a couple options here. Um, so would somebody, would somebody like to, does anybody have any questions to this report or would somebody like to move a motion? Councillor Alway. I'll move that uh, all users pay the rates they would normally pay at their home arenas as a motion. Okay, do I have a seconder for that? Councillor Little. Okay, uh, so that puts that in motion. So Madam Clerk, you've captured that, that it's uh, for clarity, it's the same that they would play at. So if it's Rockland playing at, at Flusterton, they would play the rate that they would play in Rockland and, and same with the other ones. Um, open, I'll open it up for discussion. Any comments or questions? Deputy Mayor, sir, did you have a question? Uh, just, just a comment. I think um, the motion presented is a good one. It's uh, fair. And um, I think it's quite equitable. Uh, given the pandemic uh, that we're in right now, we, uh, we haven't gone ahead and opened all our arenas. And so uh, I think it would be quite unfair for us to ask someone in Rockland to not only pay the higher fee in Flesheton, but also to drive to Flesheton. Uh, in order to rent ice time. Um, and I think it's an equitable, it's a fair and equitable motion that's been presented and uh, I, I support it. Okay, thank you. Councillor Nielsen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just two questions, one to staff. Um, is there a particular reason for the varying rates of ice times uh, for ice times in different arenas for one and two, um, just was there a thought a process on having a hybrid approach where everybody, every user group would pay the same amount, but not be the um, higher rate of Markdale and Flesherton? Good question. Uh, uh, who can answer, who can answer this? <laughs> Thank you. I will take a stab at it. Um, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Councillor Nielsen, um, the fees um, for our arenas are long-standing fees as approved in our fees and charges bylaw. Um, my assumption is that it has to do with the cost of running the arena, and I suspect the demand on each of the arenas, but that would be only a guess because this long preceded me in there. Um, the idea of recommending either they pay the Flesherton rate or their home rate, and rather than a co uh, blended rate, was simply for ease of um, administration. And we didn't want COVID's a strange time at the best of times, and we really didn't want to make this complicated. And we thought giving these two options would be the best options for council consideration. It was really that simple. Okay, thank you for that clarity, uh, Michelle. And I guess just for clarity of moving forward, so then each facility, each arena would continue to be charged and then this, the 160 will still be the normal charge for outside, is that correct? 160 that says there for non-residents? I don't know if anybody can, anybody answer, can that. answer that. That would be correct, they would be the same, but frankly right now I think with the, and I can let our emergency management committee speak to this probably more than I, but. Um, we're looking at not having people from outside the arena or, or the area anyway. We're trying to contain that bubble. But the, the reason this came to council was because it had to do with the fees and charges bylaw. It, it's not just an emergency thing. So we will stick to the charges that are in there otherwise. Okay. Any further questions then to uh, follow oh, up, Mr. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Nielsen, and then Karen has a comment. Go ahead, Councillor uh, Nielsen. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just another question. At the time of writing this report, the total revenue was recorded at the 89140 Do we have an idea on the uh, percentages uh, of that amount? Or, or moreover, what I'm asking is, at the time of writing this report, what is the percentage that the other um, arena rental users are trying to rent Flesherton? Do you understand the question? I think I read that very poorly. Do you want to try it again? <laughs> How many people that are non-Flesherton users are trying to use the Flesherton Arena? Just trying to get the percentages of 
Rockland users, Osprey users, Markdale users trying to use Flesherton. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> Madam Clerk. Um, thank you. Through your worship. So we do have a number of users that have uh, requested to use the um, Flesherton Arena. There is uh, one user group from Rockland. Um, there is a, a user group from Markdale. Um, a lot of it is hindering on when the remaining um, arenas do open. Um, some of the user groups are hanging on in hopes that the other arenas will open um, in early November. Um, but at the present time, we have a would prefer not to go or will. Um, for actuals, we have one user group in Rockland and one user group in Markdale who has confirmed for sure they will be taking ice in Flesherton. Councilor Nielsen? One further follow up. Um, in terms of that with multiple user groups, how are we determining ice times? So who gets prime time? I guess, we, uh, Madam Clerk, I guess you're going to take a stab at this as well, or? Um, we've been very lucky in that the ice times that were requested do not overlap. So we have not had to make a decision with that <laughs> at the present time. Um, based on what may move forward and whether additional users are going to require ice time in um, Flusherton or not, that may be a different story um, based on what the future may hold. Um, as you're aware, the COVID-19 page was updated yesterday. Uh, the emergency group has given a date that the Flushton Arena is opening on October 13th. So that is on Tuesday. We're moving forward with that opening and, um, and gonna see what that soft launch looks like, put all our policies and procedures in place for that soft launch before we make a decision moving forward on the other ones, but it's looking very promising. Uh, thanks for that, Madam Clerk. I take it your mediation skills, Councillor Nielsen, are really good when it comes to ice time, and uh, you'll be volunteering your services. <laughs> okay, I think uh, Madam CAO, Karen, you wish to have a comment there? I thought something popped up there. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just wanted to uh, piggyback on what Michelle had said about the rates and Councillor Nielsen's question about uh, the varying rates across the municipality. Um, I don't believe, to my knowledge, that the rates do tie into the cost of running the arena. I think it's a historical thing um, that has never really been looked at. Um, staff do plan to go forward um, at some point in the future, I can't promise when, with a um, Parks and Recreation Master Plan and the rates at that point in time would be reviewed and um, perhaps looked at to working towards a blended rate across the municipality. Okay, thank you for that, Karen. Uh, this motion has been moved. Is there, are there any other discussion points? Seeing none, all in favor. That is carried. Okay. All right, so that's uh, that's taken care of. Uh, moving on to a, a different aspect of our municipality, and that's finance and our, our treasurer. So we have a report here, uh, 7.9, with regards to borrowing. Um, it, it's pretty straightforward to, uh, there may be some questions from councillors, uh, or would somebody like to move this or would you have questions or I can go to Anna if you have questions as well. Councillor Allworth. I'll move that. Okay. Do I have a seconder? I gotta flip my screen here. Council Deputy Mayor. Okay, thank you for that. Um, do I have uh, Deputy Mayor, do you wish to speak to it? Uh, no, your worship, I, I don't have any comments to this at this point. Yeah, I'm, get, I'm getting mixed messages of, of coming through here, and that was my fault. Uh, any discussion? I don't know if Anna, do you have anything to add? Maybe she doesn't. Uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, with the construction uh, process of the water tower. I don't see. Oh, Anna? Hi, I'm here. Hi. I don't have anything to add, but I uh, can answer any questions you have. Thank you, uh, Madam Treasurer. Okay, I don't see any questions coming forward. Uh, Seeing none, uh, all in favor of that report? 
that's great. And I know last week, Deputy Mayor, you signed some paperwork so they could start get going. So that's uh, fantastic. Uh, Madam Clerk, did you have a comment? <laughs> no, Your Worship, I was providing separation between items. Oh, good, good. I, I'm, I'm getting on to your messaging, which is very helpful. I really appreciate that. All right, so item moving on to item 7.10. Um, and this, this is uh, with regards to our landfill site. Uh, our, uh, our Director of uh, Transportation and Environmental Services will be, I, I presume, is here to answer questions. Council, what's your wish? Any questions to it? Councilor Valley Cat? Do you wish, do you wish to move it or, or do you have a question? Okay, Councilor Valiquette, do I have a seconder? Deputy Mayor, okay. Questions, do we have any questions? Uh, Councilor Allen, go ahead. It, um... It says under financial impact, it will be no impact to the 2020 budget. I'm assuming this, will this be on the 2021 budget? Did I miss something? Okay, I'll we'll go to the director of the test department. Herb, do you have any, do you have a comment there? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and to, uh, to Councillor Allen. Uh, at this time, uh, there will be no cost uh, for this project. Um, uh, sometimes fill of this nature, which is a, is a table two uh, fill, um, the, the, it's, there's a de desire by, by companies to, to get it away and, and find an appropriate location for, for this type of uh, material. And uh, under our C of A or ECA by the Ministry of Environment, we are allowed to accept uh, a table two material. And uh, it is a clay silt. And that's what, where the guidelines come from the Ministry of Environment is that it must be an impervious surface in order to not allow raindrops to penetrate through that surface and into the garbage, thus, thus creating leachate. So that is, I finally found a, a soil that's uh, acceptable to take at our landfill and, and this is what's in front of us today. Hey, great. Go ahead, Councillor Allen. So are you prepared for the phone calls when people see the big trucks pulling in there and dumping for uh, weeks on end? <laughs> uh, uh, Director uh, Transportation. Thank, thank yeah. you, Mr. Mayor, and, and uh, to Councillor Allen. Um, that is the purpose of this um, this uh, kind of staff report in front of Council is to make you aware. Um, it's, it, this is an operational process. Uh, I didn't want to blindside uh, Council by continuing with an operation and direction from a Ministry of Environment uh, um, uh, inspector and our, our engineers report. Uh, this is we are owners and. Uh, and we are responsible for our landfill activities. And uh, at this time we are um, temporarily covering the Artemisia landfill. Thus we need the material to provide appropriate cover uh, to, uh, to meet our requirements. And my requirements are anticipating calls for the added, added trucks. I am aware that added trucks will be, uh, will be an issue. I, I guess if the ministry wants what's in the landfill to not be leaching into the ground, they must figure that the material that you're going to put on there is better than what's in the landfill. So perhaps that's the, uh, the response we give to concerned citizens that uh, if, it was, if it was bad soil, they wouldn't be allowing us to put it on, on the, uh, landfill material so just um I'm, I'm getting all my answers in line here um, well that's that's a, maybe a point of communication and, and maybe that's something that uh, just so we're all on the same page we do have a communication uh that we're all on the same page of how we communicate director of transportation do you have a comment to that or how, how best we communicate that and so we're all on the same page 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and to answer your, your comment and to Mr. Allen, um, um, yes, we will communicate with uh, social media and making everybody aware of this project. Um, a table two material is accepted by the Ministry of Environment. We will also have chemical analysis complete on the, uh, on the material that's coming in to make sure uh, that it does always comply with our table two requirements and we will use our engineer to uh, to confirm that material and and uh, um, the supplier of the materials is responsible for the material coming on site as we are so okay thank you for that it's always good to be prepared um other questions uh from other councillors I don't see any. This is moved by Councilor Valiquet and seconded by Deputy Mayor. Hearing no other questions, all in favor? Okay, that's uh, carried. All right. Uh, this is moving on to item 7.1, uh, 10th uh, concession roadway improvements, large asphalt patches. Um, do, uh, I'll move the report, Your Worship. Deputy Mayor. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Allwood. Questions? Any questions there to our director or just in general? I, I did I did um, I did have a question uh, that was sent to me in an email last week and I forwarded it to I think Madam CAO and uh, it actually came from Alex Ruff on, on a section of, of the 10th line. And uh, and uh, this particular road, and and it was uh, interesting that uh, I sort of forwarded on to Mr. Ruff, and I copied you, um, the Director of Transportation. I don't. Did you did you see that uh, response that I sent back? Sorry, yes, I did. Okay, was that adequate? <laughs> yes. Oh. I hope it was because I never heard any response and I, I just thought it was interesting because it was from a higher level, like the highest level from a federal MP that's being asked a question about one of our roads. And uh, I did see in the email, it sort of, it sort of spurred on from a newsletter from, from the local MP. And, and uh, anyway, I, I uh, thought that was interesting, but they, I guess people ask questions and there's nothing wrong with asking those questions. So, uh, okay. Uh, seeing there is uh, no no questions here, um, all in favor of this report? Count Councillor Allwood has a question for you, sir. Oh, sorry, sorry, I missed it. Go ahead, Councillor Allwood. Thank you. I just wanted uh, whether or not, sorry, through you or to the Director of Transportation Services, whether the uh, the, the low restriction, the heavy, uh, the haul route problem basically applies to the uh, aggregate uh, that's being hauled in that area. It's not related to C4s or... Anything else? Uh, Herb, do you have a comment there? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and to Councillor Allwood. Um, large vehicles that I was there during that 45 minute uh, site inspection, uh, multiple different types of material, not just uh, aggregate, but uh, majority of the trucks were uh, dump truck style hauling aggregate. Um, and there are some C4s in the area, but uh, this road is not built to handle heavy trucks. Um, and uh, we need to, um, one, control the amount of vehicles on that road as far as heavy trucks and uh, using the half load restrictions, which is available to the municipality to, uh, to put restrictions on a road and ask for enforcement by OPP. We've purchased uh, weigh scales to make sure that they can enforce those half load restrictions. So. Okay. Thank you Thank for, that. You for that. Thank you, Councillor Allwood. Any other questions? I know that particular road um, has pile drive. There's pile. There's wood pile drove on the side of the road to keep it uh, in place. And I think if you go back to the Osprey history book, more than once that road has completely sunk out of sight. Just overnight, there was a particular. I think it was back in the fifties, and they had to fill that road. And I think even back when. Um, at the early days of uh, Gray Highlands, um, I think when, um, uh, I'm trying to think, Gary, Gary um, Brown was the road superintendent, that they had to put another foot or two feet of material on that road because it just sort of keeps sinking. And uh, so certainly, uh, you know, that is an area of, 
of the, it is through a swamp and there is a, a number of uh, issues with that particular road from a historical point of view. If you go to the, go to the Osprey history book, you'll find it where the road completely disappeared overnight. Okay, so there's no other questions there. All in favor of this report? <clears throat> that is carried. Okay. It is past uh, 2.30. Do you wish to take a 15 minute break? Okay, so I have 12.36. Can we come back at 12.50? Does that sound fair? 2.50, oh, you mean. 2.50. <laughs> yeah, that's tonight. That yeah. <laughs> the sun shines in my light here, so I couldn't quite see that on my iPad. Yeah, sorry. 2.50. Is that okay with everybody? 10 to, 10 to, 10 to 3? Okay. So we'll recess to, uh, till 10 to 2.50.
Do you want to tell them or should I, Madam Clerk? I did. Oh. <laughs> I think we're back up and live, sir. And I'm eating an apple. Yep. <laughs> okay, we'll call this meeting back to order. <laughs> I was just counting all my heads because I got to keep flipping the screens. Oh, wow. Nothing wrong with cleaning my teeth with an apple, right? Okay, um, moving on then, our agenda. Our next item is um, item 7.12. And this was an, an item that was uh, sent to me uh, that wondered if it could be dealt with at this council meeting. Um, so this is with request to sponsoring a table. Now, <laughs> I just just for clarity, I guess, in the sense of, of um, and I did reach out to Ashley if, uh, if, there, if she uh, had any other information and she never got back to me, but, uh, um, I don't know if anybody, do you, would you want to school with Ashley, uh, Dane? Maybe she's a little younger than you. She's younger than me, so she'd definitely be younger than Dane. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. She, <laughs> I, um, I mean, she, she did go to Gray Highland Secondary. Um, yep. And yes. I think um, quite, quite uh, accomplished in, in, um, uh, in her career outside of uh, pageants. Uh, she was the 2011-2012 uh, Fevershem Fall Fair uh, Ambassador. Um, and she's, she's founded a, uh, a couple of companies in Toronto uh, and her last place of employment was at uh, C and Ski. And I'm, I'm, I think she still is uh, working there, not 100% sure. Um, yeah, quite, quite accomplished. My only uh, question, I guess, is whether um, uh, whether the event is still going forward, uh, given the fact that you can only have, well, you know, uh, there's new restrictions now. Uh, that's my only question. Well, that was the clarity I was trying to seek because I understand restaurants are still, and I, I guess that's the question. This is a restaurant, which is Myron Loretta's in St. Hampton. And I, I know there's restrictions for having to close at a certain time in Toronto and not serving past a certain time. Um, I know Jessica would be maybe the correct person to ask with regards to our control group, but, um, I, and I know it's, there's a little right in the past week, Deputy Mayor, you and I spoke about, there's a little bit of mixed messaging on exactly what is the what is, right? And, and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, just the other thing I wanted to add, Ashley was at actually at the um saw turning for definitely um uh, a week ago monday there and she was the videographer for um c and ski so she was uh she was at that uh, there that day so um anyway i i just my i i wanted to bring this forward she asked me to bring it it was sort of a time time uh a timing uh issue and uh just, uh, I guess to you, Madam Clerk, or maybe Madam CEO, do you, or are you able to tease out what is the restrictions right at this point with regards to restaurants here in Grey Highlands? Is anybody, does anybody know what the restrictions are? Because it talks about here, I think, what tables of six up to 50 people are allowed. Is that right, 50? I, well, again, that's why we need clarity. I think I yeah. need to talk about tables of 60, and, 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 and I think the table of six, six at each table is sort of your own bubble or. Mm -hmm. So I, I think um, the way the uh, event itself was uh, set up, uh, I think they were doing, they were doing it at Myler and Loretta's and uh, it was, they were encouraging you to have your own household bubble um, right. uh, in attendance with you instead of having others uh, around. 
And I think that they were going to have the tables separated um, six feet apart for social distancing and so on. And then the regular rules of going to a restaurant where if you're not seated at your table, you have to have your mask on if you're walking around and so on would apply uh, from there on. Um, but I, I, I think I think it's, it's a great um, uh, uh, point of honor, I guess, for um, our municipality to have someone competing at the world stage or at the national stage in, in, a, in a competition like this. And um, I, I think I'd like to hear more from other councillors on whether or not, you know, we, how we feel about supporting um, the, this item. Just before I go to other councillors, I, I, I'm going to go to the clerk and she may have some clarity. I saw you, I see you, councillor, a uh, little there. So, and councillor Bell. Okay. So, uh, Madam Clerk, you have a comment? Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. Our CEMC, Jessica Yanu, has, is watching this uh, and has uh, provided me with some information in relation to um, restaurants and bars. Um, some of their restrictions include no buffet, patrons must be seated at all times, um, uh, except while entering and exiting. Um, must be configured so that patrons seated at different tables are separated by a distance of at least two meters. Plexiglass, um, must contact tracing. Sorry, there's a long list here, so I'm just kind of going through it. Um, the it number of patrons say... indoors must be limited to the number that can maintain the physical distances. Events cannot exceed 100 patrons. 100, okay. In the enhanced measure zone, no more than six people may be seated together. Uh, may not be allowed to line up or congregate. Yeah, so. So I caught the six people, no buffet, and it does say in here about uh, pizza. I guess that's considered packaged food. I don't know. Is that is that considered packaged versus buffet? Like I, 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 I would be hesitant to provide any guidance okay. on the legislation for restaurants as we don't have to uh, look at that for our own municipal needs. Okay. Any questions for clarity from the clerk on that particular item before we go to general questions? My Councillor Little? Oh. Go ahead, go ahead, Councillor Little. Um, just apart from um, whether uh, this would be provincially allowed, I'm looking at it just from the perspective of our own experience as a council. I know we've participated in trivia nights in the past. And to my knowledge, um, some member of council has taken the responsibility of getting a table together or you know, people and spouses to get a table together, um, and you contribute your own money. So I don't, I don't have an issue with that. It sounds like a, a good cause, um, but I don't think that this is getting back to a situation where it's a one-off. And I think um, whatever we decide to do, um, I would encourage the the um, person who wrote the letter to uh, make them aware at least of the community grant program. And if um, I know that doesn't help this time, but it might help them going forward. I'm reluctant to, to um, contribute, even though it's not a lot of money to, um, to make the decision to put money, you know, municipal tax dollars towards something when we have a program in place to deal with these kinds of requests. But I would certainly, even though I couldn't participate in a table, if someone wants to put a table together, I, I, would, uh, I would put my $20 towards that table. Okay. Uh, am I reading this wrong? It's, it's, so it's $20 a person to participate and there's a $250 sponsor per table. Am I reading that wrong or how am I reading that? It says, or your worship. Teams of oh, six okay. people are $20 per person or $250 to sponsor a trivia round. Right, gotcha. So if it was six times 120, 
that's that's uh, that's twelve. That's one hundred twenty dollars, and or it can be a total table can be sponsored by two fifty. Right. Okay. Thank you for that, uh, uh, Madam CEO. Did you have a comment there? I thought I saw something pop up there from Karen. Is that right? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I was just going to state that the venue is a private business, and they would be mandated to comply with public health guidelines. Okay. Thank you for that clarity. Okay. So. Um, Councillor Valiquet, you can go next there. Uh, thank you. Sorry, I, I know I'm, I'm waving madly because I'm not sure if you see me or not. Or not. I'm working with the complications of a phone as well. Um, so, you know, I, I um, agree, agree wholeheartedly with what Councillor Little said. That was it's sort of exactly uh, what was in my brain. I'm also wondering why this didn't go to, um, go to the CPG immediately. Um, as opposed to hit council. Um, just looking, I, I'm just wondering, I, I guess you received this as a, um, Mr. Mayor, you received it as an email and, and it, it got put this way. I just wonder if it, it should have gone through that process or was the justification for it coming here um, the timeline? I'm not sure. That was the only thing I thought was because the timeline that. Uh... To, to come to council because of the time frame of October 8th, I think it was, wasn't it October 8th? Am I right to say that, October 8th? Yes, yes. that's October 8th. October, October 8th, yeah, so that was, uh, uh, certainly as Councillor Little said, that it could still go through other avenues if, if council wishes to send it there or whatever, but it came to me as information and because it's the timing thing, um, I felt this is, just sort of, is it, I can't remember if it was sent to mayor or mayor and council, I can't remember. So um, for ownership, I wanted to make sure if it was, uh, council takes ownership of it and decides what they want to do with it. <laughs> so, okay, uh, anything else, Councilor Valiquette there? No? Okay, Councilor Allen, you're next. Yeah, I, I have no problem supporting it personally, as Councilor Little said, um, but, um, similar to my concerns about going back into council chambers, um, I don't know that I um, want to participate in something where there's, I don't know if they have 10 tables, there's 60, 60 people. Um, it's just, it's, I think, just bad timing. Um, as I say, I would support it personally, but I don't think that I want to support it the way she wants us to support it. Okay. Any other comments then? Councillor Little, go ahead. So it is a fundraiser, Your Worship. And um, if it were different times, maybe we would put a table together. Um, mm -hmm. There's nothing to say that we couldn't uh, contribute as if we were putting a table together and donating, you know, it, it, um, we could do this outside the council chamber that if some, some individual on council wants to, um, you know, put a virtual table together sort of, I guess, or a conceptual table together um, that we could do it that way. But um, yeah, to physically be there as Councillor Allen said, I don't think is, is certainly not, um, not feasible really to put a table of six and, uh, but I don't want to give her an outright no. I would suggest in the correspondence that goes back that um, she should be made aware of the community grant program. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to have to do some motion because it, it sort of says approve or deny. So, but it could be denied with a, with a reason uh, for that. If that's the, the wish of council in that sense, I guess we could take, uh, maybe we could take the clerk's computer and put it on the table and then we could all zoom in. <laughs> I don't know if the, the clerk has a comment there or not. Uh, Deputy Mayor, I think you had a, you, you wish to speak. Sorry. Um, yeah, I was, uh, I was a little conflicted as well on, on the, uh, you know, should we be using municipal funds to support this? And so um, at the same time, I think there's, um, you know, if, if we could work with them, with, with Ashley on, you know, using that to, um, I, I don't know, I, pro promotion for our municipality, right? And then, 
there's there's good things that can come out of it, is is what I'm saying. Um, but I, I definitely agree that we, I don't think um, even from an optics perspective, council shouldn't be, um, you know, attending uh, bigger events, um, and we should be socially distancing even at bigger events. None of us are in the in the household bubble of the others. So, um, you know, uh, but uh, I think I would I would um, agree with Councillor Little. We we should send that communication asking that uh, or alerting her to the community grant program as well. Okay. Would somebody like to make a motion then that uh, that uh, we, because of the reason said, we, it's, I'm hearing you can't support it, but it's denied, but there's there's other avenues. Would somebody like, to, or maybe the clerk could craft a, I guess if somebody put a direction to the clerk, the clerk could draft a deputy mayor. I'll move that we uh, we deny, but we um, inform uh, Ms. Warrington of the uh, community grant program um, avenue. Okay, do I have a seconder for that then? Councillor Bellicat. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, obviously you didn't like the idea of taking the computer there. So uh, did you, are you able to craft that, uh, that uh, motion, Madam Clerk? <laughs> uh, thank you, Your Worship, yes. So the wording would, me be that council received the trivia night support from Ashley Warrington and that council deny the support request in its present form and notify the applicant of the community grant program. Would there be anything mentioned with regards to the pandemic or the concern of that? I don't know. Um, Councillor Allen, you had your hand up. I mean, if it was normal times, like Councillor Little said, there'd, probably, there'd be no problem, uh, but just because of the circumstances. Councillor Allen? Can we use a softer word than deny? <laughs> uh, we could, uh, however, we do get ourselves into trouble when we don't have clear delineation of what the decision was. Yeah, it's just that I think I think if if people, I just don't think we should be, and and I know we we're in agreement, but it is a bad message to send for all of council to be in a in a combined area when our facilities are all closed. Yeah. It's kind of, we're saying this, but we're doing this. So, but I would like to, I'm sure Raylene, you could come up with a nicer, sorry, I shouldn't say nicer, but a, a, a softer way of, of saying that at this time we can't support uh, something, if you could. Um, oh, okay, I, I'll, I'll reword it. At this time, council cannot support the request, but we do encourage you to explore the avenue of the community grant program. Okay, or just be upfront and say because of COVID nineteen right now, the pandemic, we just we we can't. So, so I, I think, if if I may, Your Worship, I think um, we could still uh, sponsor the uh, a trivia round by donating two hundred and fifty uh, fifty dollars two hundred and fifty dollars to to the uh, uh, foundation. Uh, but I, I think one of the concerns is also using the public fund uh, towards that. So I think um, if, if we um, just said, you know, at, at this time we are unable to uh, support your request, uh, but we encourage you, see, we, we're using a positive word, encourage um, you to explore the avenue of the community grant program. And maybe we can even put a link to the application form for the community grant program. Okay. Uh, hopefully that is a little softer worry, Madam Clerk. Um, so um, I hope that council is not trying to word the letter that will go along with the resolution. Um, however, the wording of the resolution, I softened it as much as I'm able. I'm not a very soft person, so um, I've done my best. Uh, that council received the trivia night support request from Ashley Warrington and that council declined supporting the request at the present time and encouraged the applicant to apply to the community grant program. I got a thumbs up there, Madam Clerk and uh, Councillor Veliquet. You're okay with the wording? Okay. Uh, Councillor Allen, is that uh, a little softer? <laughs> okay. Well, that's it's it's important that we try to send the right message, right? Okay. Any any discussion there? All right. Seeing none. All in favor? That's carried. All right. Okay, so we have a consent agenda. Um, are there any of those items 
that wish to be pulled separately uh, from the list? Councillor Allen. Um, 8.8, .8, I'm not sure if we need to pull it separately. There is a, um, a typo in there that needs to be corrected. And I didn't know if we could do that. I guess we do probably need to pull it um, to do that. Okay, why well, don't just pull it and then you can talk further with it okay. then. Okay, um, are there any other um, items to be pulled by the council? Uh, just uh, Councillor Little. Mm -hmm. uh, 8.3, your worship. Okay, all right. Are there any other items wish to be pulled? Going once, going twice. Okay, so can I have a mover for the consent items? I think that was Councillor Allen, Councillor Nilston. Discussion on the consent items. Councillor Nilsson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just wanted to briefly talk about uh, 8.2, the Nottawasaga Valley Conservation Authority board meeting highlights. Um, at our last board meeting, we did have a, our draft budget come through. So just as a heads up to all of council, um, optimistically, hey, uh, Great Highlands actually has a decrease in our portion of the budget. Uh, we'll see the, if we uh, fully support the budget at the NBCA, we'll save a whole $34.51. Uh, as our percentage of the conservation has uh, decreased. Um, overall, the NBCA has a very conservative um, budget given the current times that we are going through and dealing with, uh, not only the pandemic, but the um, uh, questions and, and you know, changes to conservations and, and, and such. So we have a um, modest budget increase total of 35,768. So I just kind of bringing council's attention to that, that uh, the NBCA is running smoothly. And in, and from my opinion, as a great Highlands representative on that board, doing well for us. Well, that's great news. I don't know if there's any questions to that, to, to Councillor Allen. I just wondered if um, the member for Nottawasaga Valley has a percentage increase that that is. Overall? For yeah, for sure, Councillor Allen. The actual percentage increase is a 1.4% on the NBCA budget. Thank you very much. Okay, any qu any questions to to that or any of the other ones? I will say I was down to Barry and down to Aurora Monday night and I came across that road between Angus uh, going uh, east. And that's quite a freeway you got going over there, Councillor Nielsen, to, to when you go over there. That's... Uh, really quite an improvement, four lane highway from Angus to Barry there. Uh, any other questions to the consent items? Okay. Uh, Just a quick I'll, comment on items, sir. Sorry, you may not see me. Oh, go ahead. Um, just a question on um, 8.5 to staff. When another municipality is working on um, zoning provisions, do our staff reach out with um, information about our zoning and, and changes they're making that are related to ours? Or is it more just um, our staff stay away unless asked questions? Madam Clerk. Um, when this is a planning issue, I would direct your question to Director Benner. Okay, so for circulation though, I think Madam Clerk, there's probably the uh, circulation because we're within so many distance probably from a municipal act process or planning act. So Councilor, or uh, sorry, Director of uh, Planning, uh, Michael Brenner. I'm going to ask you to Councilor Nielsen. Um, when a municipality speculates a, uh, or, or undertakes a comprehensive uptake to their zoning bylaw, that is, or not even comprehensive, but an uptake to their zoning bylaw, that is municipal wide, as is this case, then they often will circulate to the adjoining municipalities. Um, uh, that gives us as a joining uh, the opportunity to review and to provide comments 
formally through that application process. Um, quite often though, um, as a municipal planning departments, we often cross dialogue, cross pollinate each other's policies, so to speak. And we do come together at least on the county level um, several times a year to discuss planning initiatives that would impact the entire co um, county or adjoining, adjoining communities or even changes to provincial policy. So there's, there's quite an active dialogue amongst planners and planning and building departments across multiple jurisdictions. So Michael, just to follow up with that. So an example could be, and maybe it's more of an urban setting where you could have one side of the street, you have certain zoning criteria and across the street, you could have eight story buildings. Would that be an example why you would circulate to your neighboring municipality to sort of have some consistency? Because one side of the street could be one thing and the other side of the street, but it could be a, a municipal boundary. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, that's true. You could have, and there are areas in, in Ontario and probably across the country where, where a municipality has their urban area that's split. So you have, um, you know, your Markdale on one half, West Gray on the other half. And if it was all built up in the West Gray side, it would look very much like Markdale. And yeah, you could have eight story buildings on one side of the road and, um, you know, agricultural sorry, properties on the other side of the building of the room. Right. And right. definitely then that's when you have your two planning departments working very closely together for that settlement area. I know like the village of St. Hampton is split not only by a, a main road, but it's also split by a municipality and a county. So yes, that correct. would be an, an example of, of two separate jurisdictions in place, right? So does that, uh, does that help Councillor Nielsen? I guess it does. That, I said that helps. Okay, I didn't see your, your thumbs up. Okay, great. Any other comments with regards to the consent agenda? Okay, that's been moved by Councillor Allen, second by Councillor Nielsen. All in favor? Okay, that's carried. All right. So, Councillor Little, uh, Grace Albo highlights uh, 8.3. Yeah, thank you, Your Worship. Um, the minutes are here from uh, September and August. And uh, there, were, there are a few initiatives that um, Gray Sobel has undertaken that um, I think would be of interest to Gray Highlands. So I just wanted to make sure that council was aware of what those initiatives are. And if you want to um, proceed um, with any further than just receiving for information. The first one um, on the highlights for the September um, meeting is that uh, Gray Sobel has started doing sub watershed report cards. So um, for the last number of years, a uh, watershed report card comes out every five years. For the last number of report cards, it's, um, and it will continue to be for the whole watershed. But uh, just recently, uh, Gray Sobel has started doing sub watershed report cards. They just re um, completed one for Bothwell Creek, which uh, is the water uh, smaller watershed between Owen Sound and Meaford. Uh, municipality of Meaford. And they go into uh, the, the same detail on forest cover, wetlands, um, uh, uh, surface water, quality of surface water, and uh, identify what they're doing is identifying where there may be um, challenges, uh, where there could be some um, stewardship done. And uh, this is a way of kind of narrowing down the focus and putting attention where it needs to be. So uh, the last statement there is municipal councils are encouraged to experience a presentation from staff to target a sub watershed in their municipality. And uh, maybe you can think about this and, um, and uh, decide you know, whether we, you would like to have Grace Level staff uh, present on a, on a sub watershed and what's involved. The watersheds in our um, immediate area would be the Upper Beaver River, which feeds into Lake Eugenia, and then the Boyne River and the Lower Beaver River. And I think Mill Creek is also part of that. So um, those are our sub watersheds. The next, and, and if you do, maybe you could just, um, after I'm done talking, let me know if this is something that you would like to pursue. Um, a bit of good news, and some of you are aware that um, Elephant Thoughts, which is in the old Kimbercote, on the old Kimbercote property, 
was having some um, uh, challenges moving ahead with their planning application and it eventually got resolved through a lot of cooperation between the municipality and the uh, conservation authority. And so um, I just wanted to make you aware that um, Elephant Thoughts is collaborating with Gray Sobel on a, a water level monitoring um, site on the Beaver River there and um, covering help, help, helping to cover the cost of the equipment. And so I just thought this was um, kind of a good, uh, good news story from a, from a challenging, uh, from you know, the challenges that they were experiencing through the planning process. And then natural, naturalization partnerships or forestry coordinator, Michael Fry uh, brought a report to council on naturalization. And I forwarded the information on to the um, uh, Gray Highlands Climate Action Group um, because they've had some discussions around this and uh, so they've set up a Zoom meeting with Michael and the and members of the uh, group. And it, I think um, if you're interested, you can participate and be part of that. Um, but it's looking at um, having the uh, Conservation Authority coordinate um, and help people get started in doing naturalization projects in their municipality or in their area. And um, so uh, the date of that is, October the 14th, so a week from today um, at 7 p.m. If anyone's interested, I can give you the contact uh, email for, the, for uh, Joyce Hall, who is kind of coordinates the, the climate action group. But I think that would be really, really interesting to um, be involved in. And finally, on that particular um, uh, minute highlights, there is a uh, contest a photo contest um, to assist with the production of the, um, what, do you, what do they call it? It's all the conservation areas in one booklet. And uh, so they're soliciting photographs from people in the community to um, be part of that, um, <clears throat> to be selected to be part of that brochure. And the um, prize is a season's pass, Grace Level season's pass. And one final thing is the, um, from the August newsletter, um, Grace Sobel has been setting up guided hikes. So limited in number in, on Grace Sobel properties. And the, they held two at Haibu, which were very well, you know, oversubscribed, very well attended. There was a lot of interest. And so board members have been asked to inform their respective municipalities of the possibilities. So, you know, we do have some Grace Sobel properties, a number of them in our municipality. And um, if there is interest, once again, I guess you could go through me if you would like to um, uh, inform Grace Sobel that we're interested in having some sort of guided hikes in our municipality. So, yeah, there are quite a few things to consider. And um, I don't know if you want to ask me any questions or you would like to give me any direction, but um, I just didn't want to let this go by without mentioning all the good things that are happening, which, which could involve uh, Gray Highlands. Okay, thanks for that, uh, Councillor Little, and, uh, and, and great work you do as a chair as, as well. Um, any comments to uh, Councillor Little on that uh, report? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just flipping through here. Okay, so we do you we do need you to move that, uh, Councillor Little, in the yeah. sense that you pulled it. Do I have a seconder for that, Councillor Deputy Mayor? Any further uh, comments? So then, just just regard October fourteenth at seven p.m. That's a Zoom or a virtual or what is is that? A that is the um, Grey Highlands Climate Action Group. I guess oh, it's I prob probably their regular meeting. And um, yeah, if anybody needs the link, I can uh, give you the email address of the, or put you in touch with the person who does that coordination. Right, okay. Just uh, you, you, you invited that date. So I just want to make sure I got that correct. So, okay. Uh, seeing there's no other uh, comments, all in favor of that? Do we have that a secondary, your worship? Yeah, that was Deputy Mayor. Okay. Yeah, so let's do that again. All in favor? That's carried. Okay. 
Uh, then our last item was pulled is 8.8, .8, Councillor Allen. Yes, thank you. On um, page one of the report, right at the bottom, says the proposed 250 square meter shop and 752 square meter storage area. I know it's um, kind of nitpicking, but our official plan, I believe, um, the official plan or the zoning, one of the two, official plan, I think, states oh. 750 square meters for the outside storage. So I think, um, and on the, the sketch that's attached to the um, report, it does say 750. So I think we should correct that. So that should read the proposed 250 square meter shop and 750 square meter outdoor storage. Is that what it should say? Just, yeah, 750 square meter storage area. It would require an official plan amendment, I believe, to go to 752. Well, um, I don't know if there's a plus and minus in there or not. Uh, 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 the director of, of um, planning, Michael, do you have any comments to that? <clears throat> yes, uh, through Mr. Mayor to uh, Councillor Allen. Councillor Allen is correct. The uh, size requirements are in our um, official plan. So those two extra square meters would require an official plan amendment, uh, which I know the applicant wasn't intending on. He was intending on the 750 square meter zoning um, bylaw size. I'm just looking at our draft bylaw two, which will have to be um, amended to the 750, not 752. Right, that'd be about the size of a, an, a, an extra table, right? Two square meters would be a, like a table. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to not put that table in there. All right, so that, so that, so that, um, so you're moving this with those slight changes, and uh, Councillor Allen, do I have a seconder then? Councillor Nielsen, and that'll have to be changed in the in the bylaw itself as well. Any further discussion there? Seeing that, all in favor? That's carried. Okay. Okay, and so that one is, is uh, Z25, 2020. Just double checking that. Uh, okay, so there are um, eight bylaws that are coming forward. Does, um, other than making an amendment, do any of those need to be pulled? Councilor Allen? So I guess I'll officially ask for um, the sixth one, uh, 2020 to be pulled. Okay, but does that actually have to be pulled or is that a, just a slight housekeeping thing that needs to be done? Madam Clerk? Yes. Councilor Allen Clerk? is Yes, Councillor Allen is correct. That should okay. be pulled because you are not approving it as it is. You're approving it as it is amended. Just wanted to double check there. Okay, so 9.6 will be voted on separately. That's 2028.9. 9. Okay. Uh, 9.6. Yeah. Right. Okay. So do I have a, is there, are there any other, are there any other of the bylaws wish to be pulled and voted on separately? If not, can I have a mover and a seconder for the remaining bylaws? Councillor Allwood, Councillor Nielsen. Any discussion on those bylaws? So that's the mall accepts 9.6. Okay, seeing that, all in favor? That is carried. Okay, so um, we have two notice of motions that are in place. Bylaw 9.6, sir. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Slipping along. Thank you for that. Councillor Allen, you're moving that bylaw with the amendment change? I'll move that as amended. Yes, thank you. And Councillor Nielsen, sorry. Yep. Okay, so let's move for Councillor Allen. Second by Councillor Nielsen. With the change from 252 to 250, or sorry, 750, <clears throat> 750, 752. Any other discussion with that one? Seeing none, all in favor? 
That's correct. I guess I must have wanted to jump right into those notice of motions quickly, I guess. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right. Councillor Nielsen, uh, item 10.1. Um, this is, you're bringing this forward. So I will uh, pass the floor over to you. You have the floor. I, so I had an opportunity. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I had an opportunity to discuss my concept and idea for this with uh, every member of council. So I'd like to thank all of you for your time. Um, it's apparent during my conversation with everybody that Oh. Well, just for clarity, individually, correct? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> just never. The clerk, I can see the clerk go. <laughs> um, during the conversation I've had with everybody, there seems to be um, a consensus that more information, uh, more clarity as to what is going on uh, would be beneficial to the group. Um, it's expected that the pandemic we're experiencing will last for the foreseeable future, uh, months at least, or if not uh, more than a year. So because of this longer than normal timeline where there is no end anticipated or visible, and because the pandemic state we're in is considered our new normal, I believe that all councils should be aware of what's happening now, rather than when the emergency is declared over and we receive a 18 months worth of meeting minutes in one shot. Our emergency plan states that the composition of the ECG can be the mayor and other members of council. So because the uniqueness of the situation, I believe we should all be on there. So council can do its job and understand what's going on in the municipality. Okay. Um, so then, uh, so. Is Looking there, for a okay. seconder. <laughs> yes, so, yeah, no, no, I was just gonna say, you're, you're gonna move this. I, yep. I presume. Is there a seconder to put this on the floor? I'm flipping through my screen here. Uh, Councillor Allen. Okay. So just for the, so Councillor Allen, do you have anything to add as you being the seconder to this motion before I open it up for uh, comments or feedback? Um. Well, I, I agree with Councillor uh, Nielsen that uh, it would be nice to not only know what's going on, but also have a say in what's going on. Um, I guess to be um, honest, totally honest about this whole process, I was um, surprised that in the length of time it took for Council to be um, not made aware, but, but for council to be brought into any discussions um, after the, the shutdown of Ontario, I, I, I believe it was, it was um, weeks before there was any consultation with council. So um, I, uh, I, I think this is a good, a good step and it's perhaps uh, doesn't mean that all seven of us have to be at every meeting, but um, but perhaps um, a majority of, of council. And and I don't know about the reporting whether it should be reported more often. I don't know what the what what is the protocol for reporting out on those meetings. I guess I'll ask that question. So yes. Um... I'm going to go back to staff before I go to, because I think that's important to, to uh, tease out that, that, that particular item that you just raised, Councillor Allen. So I'm going to go to the clerk to start, or maybe the Madam CAO, but is Jessica? Um, so yes, your worship. Um, Jessica is in attendance um, and sh as our CEMC, she is probably the most versed in our emergency plan to be able to provide the clerk clarification. Okay, and just for clarity, what that acronym, so everybody knows what you just, you just read off that acronym, but what that exactly means in the sense of that acronym, so everybody understands it. 
Certainly. So our CEMC is our Community Emergency Management Coordinator. Jessica is the person that makes sure that our plan is in place. It is done what it needs to do. She oversees our MECG meetings. She ensures that all the training that's required by all members of MECG and all the exercises that are required by the members of the MECG are completed and in compliance with the uh, Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act. Great. Thank you for that. And uh, so uh, if Jessica, can, if I can recognize Jessica, I, is she um, coming up here to speak to us? Just looking at my screen here. I'm here, Your Worship. And how are you today? Oh, fine. Yourself? Not too bad. Uh, welcome. And uh, I'm not sure if you have heard the introduction of the notice of motion or the seconder, Councillor Allen. Uh, but more specifically, Councillor Allen was asking about the process and reporting out and all the, all the uh, uh, I guess, the rules around all that part. If you can explain that, that would be great. Sure. Can you just repeat, sorry, the question once so, more? So, so, so basically, Councillor Nielsen has presented his notice of motion. Councillor Allen has seconded the, the notice of motion. But Councillor Allen was also asking, how, what is the, pro, the procedure of reporting out uh, from the CEMC group? And what, you know, and I, there's part of the concern is, is council doesn't, doesn't get the information or they don't know exactly. And what is the rules around reporting out um, from that? And I and I'll certainly will go back to Councillor Allen to f f follow up maybe with questions to you as well. Sure, so through you, Your Worship, to Councillor Allen. Um, in terms of reporting, um, we would have to defer back to our emergency management plan. Um, so our emergency management plan does reference the mayor's ability to keep council informed. Um, that is referenced in part 11.1.1, .1 and it is section G subsection G of that uh, part of the plan. Um, our plan itself is a public document. In terms of emergency management, there is um, some form of confidentiality concerning the MECG. It's important to consider emergency management um, in, in the way that this plan was established and the way that the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act was ingrained in legislation was with the notion of natural emergencies in mind. And it's important to notice that this emergency, the pandemic, has covered many different jurisdictions. It's covered the Ontario entire province um, and the entire globe. Um, and our legislation, our guidance has to come from the plan and from the act which governs it as well. So with that in mind, I can only defer to our plan, um, but that being said, we seek guidance from the province and through our member municipalities, we um, convene regularly. In terms of the confidentiality, um, the members that are on MECG are um, assigned through council and that is established by council uh, resolution or by council bylaw. And that membership, if you think of it in terms of a toolbox, is called upon in terms of their subject matter expertise. So we have our MECG membership, and then we also have that extends out to we can call upon um, OPP, we can call upon um, uh, e EMS social services from the county, we can call upon other outside organizations and other supports as needed. Um, in the initial stages, it was sort of all hands on deck in terms of our MECG because information was coming at us very rapidly and it was constantly changing. And um, the climate with, of, of this emergency was constantly changing. Um, again, the membership um, was reevaluated throughout the um, emergency and we have called upon other members as, need, as needed, um, all with the understanding that our MECG meetings are confidential. 
That being said, information that flows through the MECG is done so um, through our emergency information officer, which is our lovely clerk, Raylene. Um, and so the resolutions that we establish through MECG become public knowledge through information that is made available through the, the emergency information officer. Uh, that information is then updated through other media releases, press releases, or on our COVID page. And that information is public knowledge and public knowledge to council. It's been my understanding that there has been information that have flowed to the group from our CAO as well. Um, but again, I can only refer back to the plan as it has been established for what the protocol is for how that information is to flow. And, and that's, to my knowledge, that has been established throughout this emergency according to our plan. I'm available for any follow-up questions too. Okay, thank you for that, uh, Jessica. Uh, Councillor Allen, do you have a uh, follow-up or, or um, any questions further to that? Uh, no, I don't think so. That's fine, thank you. So, so the question I, I had, Jessica, and we sort of it just sort of raised on Tuesday, and is you mentioned that section about section eleven point one point one section G about me reporting to council. How how do I do that as the mayor with regards to the confidentiality that is in place? And maybe that's maybe that's where we go here. I don't know. Is there a mechanism that can be reported out? or is there anywhere it speaks to this that I can report to council in a confidential way, but then it's not to the public in a sense as is governed by the plan. I don't know if you have any comment to that because I know that was one of the things that was raised the other day. And, and uh, cause I haven't been reporting to council just because of the understanding of the confidentiality that has been in play other than the generality that comes from the communication once that's been sent out by the communication officer. Do you have any comments to that, Jessica? So in terms of procedurally, we don't have a standard operating procedure or a standard operating guideline specifically surrounding communication from the mayor to councillors. Um, that is something that as a program committee, the, and again, I'm using terms, I'll have to explain. So the program committee is the committee that basically is the driving force behind the policy. So the program committee is a separate membership. Um, it's kind of a subsection of the MECG, which is the Municipal Emergency Control Group. Um, so any changes to the plan are made by the program committee. If there are changes that are clerical, they can be done by the CEMC, just advise the program committee and then it's carry on. But if there's specific changes to the plan, it needs to go to the program committee, be approved by that group. And then that has to be approved by council because of course, any changes to the plan have to be approved by council. So if we wanna establish a protocol or a procedure, we can certainly do so. That um, motion would come through the uh, program committee and then be approved by council. In the interim, it would be my recommendation. And again, this is only my professional recommendation um, that the communication uh, that the mayor wishes to give to council be vetted through our emergency information officer first prior to being released. And again, that's with the understanding that the communication that occurs is also confidential. So any information received to council would not be public knowledge until such a time that it's been made public knowledge through, um, through our website or through press releases by the EIO. The whole notion of emergency management, again, I go back to the rationale behind the reasoning of the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act and our plan is that this was established to provide procedures and regulations for natural emergencies. So if you think of something like a tornado, for example, um, and we've experienced natural emergencies, um, we, uh, we know that there are individuals that are affected and there is at times sensitive information that the group is made aware of. In a normal emergency, things would develop organically. There would be an emergency site 
And that site, the command would be normally fall on fire because as our plan dictates, they're always the first responders for most emergencies. So a site commander would be in place. They would then notify either myself or the CIO that we have an emergency on hand. I would consult and the mayor whether or not we are assembling our EOC, which then houses our MECG members. A notification would go out to that group and then it would develop organically from there. A decision to make an emergency declaration would be made. And then we take direction from the site, actually. The site tells us we need... Um, you know, if it was a flood, we need sandbags, we need people, we need to evacuate. So there's specific task oriented goals that would be provided from the site level. And our goal as the EOC is just to support that site. It's not to make rules, it's not to make regulations, it's to provide the resources and support those boots on the ground. This emergency is different in a sense. And one would argue that the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act didn't account for this scale or this length or this type of emergency. So it's very hard when we're working in this type of emergency because as a whole and as a globe and as certainly as a province, they were working with a different type of emergency, um, which perhaps our legislation didn't account for. So we're doing the best we can with the resources that we have and we have some pretty amazing people. So that's just maybe a tangent that I'm going off on, but um, that's to provide some clarity and some guidance in terms of what we're working with and the whole rationale behind the emergency management group. Okay, Jessica, um, anything follow up on that, Councillor Allen? I guess you can't see me. No, I'm fine. Thanks. Okay, sorry. I, I had a chat pop up. I had a oh. chat pop up in front of me. <laughs> okay, Councillor Nielsen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think um, what Jessica explained um, is all correct. Like the, there's a few points there that I took out. One is that this emergency plan uh, and the province's emergency plan didn't, uh, and, and I don't think could, foresee what we are currently experiencing and what we're currently living through. One of the challenges right now, as I stated before, was that there's no end site in this. In a regular emergency, there's an end site and then there's a, go uh, a goal. Uh, as Jessica explained, the, the site of the emergency dictates the tasks. We are not in that situation. This isn't a normal emergency. Uh, the other point that I take from what you said was that it is council's job to appoint who's a part of this team. Uh, council has the ability to appoint uh, the membership to this group. That would facilitate all of council having an understanding of what's going on. It would give any confusion, take any confusion out of what the mayor can and cannot tell council, what the group can and cannot explain to council. All I'm asking for is a way for for council to have the information that the group is having because there's no end goal to this I don't see an issue with what I'm requesting um, I think it's uh, there's there's no part of me saying I want the emergency to be cancelled I don't think that's appropriate there's no part of me saying I want to change directions that are being given all I'm asking is for all of council to have the same information so that council can understand the situation as well Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Nielsen. I don't know if Jessica gave any response to that. I'm not looking for a response. I, I, I think, Councillor Nielsen, you were just explaining more to your notice of motion. It was there. Councillor Alwood? Thank you, Worship. Um, I, I basically asked the same question of uh, uh, Councillor Allen mentioned in terms of uh, the protocol. And I directed my question to uh, Raylene, or uh, EIO and uh, copied the CAO and they referred me to Jessica who responded uh, and I didn't realize it wasn't circulated to all of council but um, she basically covered it off in the uh, in her presentation to council at this time I think there'd be some value in circulating that email uh, conversation to all of council but my issue with what Councilor Nielsen is proposing is you know this committee uh, meets once a week 
having all counselors there, I mean, there are financial implications and timing, you know, our time and implications in this. I, I think the, uh, the fact that the, and my, my, <clears throat> my question was, you know, related to the pandemic being different from normal weather related emergencies, which obviously the uh, legislation was set up to deal with, whereas, you know, a pandemic was gonna last over a year um, is a slightly different situation. I think the, uh, what we ought to consider is, you know, the mayor is, as a member of that committee, able to communicate to council. And uh, I think we need to, you know, explore opportunities in that area to keep council informed because the minutes are confidential apparently. And, uh, but that doesn't mean that we can't be, and if confidentially, confidentiality is the issue, then we can do this in closed sessions uh, as we meet. But, uh, you know, I think it's important the council does be informed. I don't see attending, you know, being part of the committee is the answer. You know, the financial implications of that are, are large. If all seven of us were to show up weekly at meetings and get paid for that. Um, so, you know, the, uh, there is provision let me get that number again in section 111.1.1 subsection G that allows the mayor to communicate uh, and keep council informed. I, I think we need to uh, give some directions to the emergency uh, control group and or the, the other acronyms that have, that have slipped my mind at the moment, but the EOC, I guess, and look for some direction in that. Uh, how, how does council get keep better informed during this pandemic emergency. But I, I couldn't support Councillor Nielsen's notice of motion at this time. Well, thank you for that, Councillor Allwood. And sort of what I'm hearing from Councillor Nielsen, it's not necessary to be there to be part of the decision making, but more to be there to understand and have communication. So maybe there is a hybrid to your uh, comment, Councillor Allwood, is, is there a hybrid that we could somehow look at in camera or, or something that can allow all that communication to to flow, but it is in confidentiality that allows then the information and 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 it still it keeps the uh, control part of the CM, the CEMC or the the EOC group together in the sense of what they their what their goal is to do. I think I have Councillor Little next. Is that correct, Councillor Little? Thank you. you um, yeah, I, I very much like what Councillor Allwood was saying. I, I do support that. I understand where Councillor Nielsen's coming from. Um, the, you know, wanting to have more information. Um, so it's good to know that there is a, a conduit there that we can explore that the mayor can share as part of that group that he can share with us. Um, in my converse, one on one conversation with uh, Councillor Nielsen. Um, you know, I, I did understand the, the need for more information, but I did express to him my fear. And my fear is that uh, members of council are going to be on that if, if that were to happen, that they would want to have a say. And I really don't think that this is the forum for, for that kind of discussion or debate, but it would be tempting. Um, I think it's very important in an emergency situation to have a clear protocol, clear lines of communication, clear lines of responsibility, expertise at the table. It's not the place for members of council to sit in a body or even in part and, and um, you know, provide advice or recommendations on how to deal with an emergency. And I acknowledge that this situation is different. Um, but I think the concern from the mover is that we would just like to be better informed, particularly as this goes on and on. So I'm, I'm very much opposed to having all members of council be part of this group. Um, I would like to improve if we can or take advantage of what's already in the, um, in the regulations that um, would provide count members of council with more information. I have faith in our mayor that he's part of that. Um, and, um, you know, having him at the table is good enough for me. Thank you. Well, thanks for that vote of conference, Council Little. And I, I do want to say that the deputy mayor is also at that table as well. All right. Go ahead, Council Little. Oh. So thanks for that vote of confidence. Um, 
I did have Councillor Valiquette and then the Deputy Mayor. Sorry. Go ahead, Councillor Valiquette. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I um, agree uh, what uh, Council Little is saying. I think if all of Council is sitting in on, their, on those meetings, there are many, um, many issues associated with that. And I do think that what the current plan does, I think what we've done is we have unsurfaced that, um, and, how, and how could we have known, right? We all get that. But I think we've unsurfaced um, an, an obstacle or somewhere where we can improve. And that certainly is in communication and communication can al always be improved. And I think that there are other avenues in which we can, um, can get that done. For example, we might be able to uh, receive updates in a closed after our regular council meetings. Um, what about something like we receive Friday council updates um, from uh, the clerk and or Jerry Lynn? Um, maybe there could be a Friday update uh, email, uh, quite simply just bullet points. Um, that is, a, you know, I, I agree with um, what uh, Jessica has said um, that, uh, uh, sorry, I just lost my train of thought there. Um, a portal, like a portal or something maybe, or something that you could go to? Well, quite frankly, a lot of that information is already on. If we, you know, if um, the information that's been put out on social media, the information that is on the website, um, yes, I believe that there are nuances that, um, that if you only read that, you might miss. But the reality of the situation is if you subscribe to our websites, um, you would have a, a vast, um, you would understand what was going on largely, at least 80%. So I think what, what we need to do is determine, um, in particular in an emergency, what is the effective, what is the most effective way for, and as the plan states, for the mayor to uh, communicate to, uh, to council? Right. I think that seems to be the underlying theme that's coming through here is just communication of that information. It's confidential. And how can we do that? Deputy Mayor, sorry about that. Uh, Councillor Valiquet, uh, she beat you to it. So, <laughs> No worries. As long as she doesn't beat me to the most important motion. Well, one of the most important motions. Uh, so I, I commend Councillor Nielsen for bringing forward this notice motion. It's, it's really gotten a conversation started, and I think it's an important conversation that we needed to have. I told Councillor Nielsen when we had our one-on-one -on -one conversation around this notice of motion that um, I would support wholeheartedly a, uh, a request that uh, you know we make a report um, from the MECG to Council, which would come at closed uh, under closed meeting. Um, uh, during during our regular council meetings, and I still wholeheartedly support that form of reporting back to council. Um, I'd like to draw our attention to section 9.1, uh, the first paragraph of it, um, and the first line really, the decision-making process can best be accomplished by roundtable assessment of events as they occur, and by agreeing on a course of action to overcome uh, specific problem areas or situations. I think it's hard to, um, find that consensus, the more people you add to a table, the harder it becomes to find the consensus. And um, quite frankly, there is certain uh, debates that we have with our smaller group right now that take up a lot of time. And so I don't see how adding more people to that uh, would, would be beneficial in that sense. And the, the, the final thing I, I'll say here is that, um, while I currently do sit on the MECG, uh, that is mainly in part due to uh, His Worship's role as the Warden of Gray County. Uh, if His Worship wasn't the Warden of Gray County, I wouldn't be on the MECG either because um, there's only the role for the head of council or the mayor under our emergency management plan under 11.1.1. .1 .1. Um, so I, I think I, I strongly believe that the emergency management group should be a small lean group that is able to make quick decisions. Um, and which is why I can't really support Councillor Nielsen's motion to have all of council on that group. Um, but again, I think it, it's, it's important that there's some sort of a reporting back. And uh, rather than an email, I would rather an update come from MECG um, uh, to council under, under a closed session. 
Uh, thank you, Your Worship. And uh, thank you for those uh, comments uh, from everyone. Uh, I think Jessica sort of captured it correctly that under no under normal nat natural disasters, you know, it could be a week or two, and this is all wrapped up, not six months plus. And I'm going to suggest that years from now, at many conferences, there's going to be a lot of a lot of uh, conference topics talking about emergency control groups and 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 all the issues around COVID-19. It, it'll fill all the conferences uh, uh, stuff for a long time to come from that perspective. And just a comment I have, which I find is interesting, at the county, um, they have a mechanism where they can invite all the mayors to their working group. And we have done that a few times uh, to, to get that urge, or there's a representative from each municipality from, from that part. And uh, so, I, which is, I, I just thought that last night, I just thought that was, because it's, it's not always, but there is that, time when we there is sort of written in there that the there is an alternate that does go and more specifically that's in play in a normal natural disaster is if there is more than i think two two municipalities then it triggers the county to be involved with the emergency as well and then then generally there's one representative that stays at the municipality and one representative goes to the county and and that's probably the mechanism that why that is in play so um, I'm going to go back to Jessica and then maybe others or the CAO. Um, Jessica, do you have any follow-up from all the comments that have been made here? Or I'm not asking you if you do, but uh, I don't know if you have any, any follow-up on the comments that have been made. Um, not exactly, no. There's some good conversations, some good discussions. Um, and I think council's um, discussion on this um, was very well-rounded. Um, I would say with the county's involvement, uh, the rationale behind having um, individuals from each municipality representative is just because of the scale and the nature of that emergency. Um, we're not included in terms of a voting basis in any means, but it's more just a roundtable discussion to know the challenges and the unique um, problems that are faced in each municipality so that as a whole, the county can come together and make decisions to better support one another. And that's really the county's role in an emergency that's large scale is to support its member municipalities. Um, in terms of the um, the deputy mayor's comment in terms of um, MECG membership, um, he's absolutely correct. He was called upon due to the fact that um, the MECG was meeting initially. It was a very um, small group of um, just directly related um, members of the MECG. And then once the county had declared, we moved to also invite um, the deputy mayor in terms of uh, succession planning, essentially, if the mayor at any point was called away as, as warden, um, we needed to have an individual that was knowledgeable about what was going on. Um, and if you refer back to the plan, we do have um, a tertiary alternate as well as a fourth alternate for the mayor as well. And at this point in time, no other members of the MECG have their alternates that sit in. Um, it's just the mayor. And again, that's just due to the role as warden. Um, so we're in a unique situation there. And certainly those alternates, if it was a, a, a round table that consistent of many hours around that table, then that alternate, alternate would take over if it was like 12 hours. And then, you know, if it was an ongoing disaster, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that, Jessica. Uh, Councillor Nielsen, uh, comments? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, as, as a whole, I appreciate the conversation that Council has been having right now. Um, about two months ago, uh, I reached out to the Mayor, and I believe it was the Deputy Mayor as well, and asked for how can we get better information to come back. And the response pretty much was, well, the, the meetings are confidential, um, the information is confidential, so we couldn't get a reporting mechanism back. Part of the whole purpose for this motion was to start the conversation that got started. Um, the, in, in earnest, uh, the, the idea of not knowing what um, is being discussed, what ideas are being discussed, what plans are being discussed, 
what items are moving forward uh, with the emergency management group um, does frustrate me as a councillor of the municipality because this isn't a, a uh, I will use the word like a, a site emergency. It's not the same thing. And so I was frustrated. Um, I feel like uh, as a whole, my motion has been successful. All of us are now having a discussion about how can we get better communication. I think this is gonna put an emphasis on um, some reporting mechanism back. I feel that that reporting mechanism coming back would best be served if, count, if it came to council as a whole in a closed session. That would give council as a whole enable ability to discuss what is being done, not just receive for information an update. I would, um, I would, uh, I, I think my opinion does differ a little bit from Councillor Little's, where, and, and maybe even count Deputy Mayor to size, where having the extra people at the table I don't see as a negative. I see that we are able to bring other ideas forward that may have been implemented or may not have been implemented. I had an experience at the Beaver Valley Ski Club with a cleaning supply and a defogger that as soon as I got back to my store, I sent an email off uh, to the CAO and to um, Director Harris. And it just so happened that they were worth thinking about the same concept of, of purchasing defoggers that are sanitary defoggers for the municipality. And I sent them you know, my feedback on what I experienced at the ski club when the ski club is going through the health unit on how it can safely open. I think the reason we have a council is because we all bring experience, we all bring ideas to a table. Um, and for that reason, I think that there's no uh, negative to having us at a table for discussion, for input. Um, all of us bring something, uh, I, I personally feel, because I'm an optimistic person, we all bring something positive to the table. So ultimately, uh, I think I've been successful here that we're gonna see some changes to the lack of information um, and we'll move we'll move forward from there. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you for that, Councilor Nielsen. And I just wanna make one other comment. The and I don't know if this is possible. If um, for myself, I sit on the, the um, Bruce Gray Health Unit as the ex officio because the um, representative from Gray County, it was picked for two years, which is the deputy warden. And, but because I'm the warden, um, I do sit on there, but I don't make note or comment. I, I'm in on the meeting, but I'm, I'm a non-voting uh, representative. And I don't know if that's even a remotely possibility if people can sit in it, but they don't have, they don't have that voting status too. I, I, I don't know if that's a possibility either, but um, I, Madam Clerk, did you wish to speak? I thought something popped up there. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. So as okay. the emergency information officer, it is my job to um, make sure that the uh, decisions of the MACG um, get put out to the public. So as you're all aware, we do have our COVID-19 update page. Um, we provide general updates. I think we're on um, edition eight of the general update. Um, which was started about halfway through once all the updates started going everywhere. Um, you can subscribe to that page and as soon as an update is posted, you get an email that says what was posted and why. Um, so if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to that. Um, I am going to rebut Councillor Nielsen's indication that there's nothing negative to having council members in the MECG. Um, the first thing is, is should we have more than three members in attendance? We now have a quorum of council. So now we no longer have an MECG meeting. We now have a closed meeting of council that provides what has to have notice, the agendas, the minutes, and all of all that goes through with that. So there is an additional implication to staff. The other thing that I'm going to say about this is if you have council in attendance, you're now making political decisions as opposed to emergency decisions. There is decisions that have been made at the MECG table that I didn't agree with, but you know what? Every person that's sitting at that table has a role and a responsibility under the plan, and they're there for a specific reason because they have expertise in a specific area. It's not generalized. So the decisions that are made are made based on expertise and not made on the political pressures that council feels. I feel for you guys. I know you are getting emails from people and wanting this and wanting that, but your role as politicians 
shouldn't be those decisions that are made in the emergency. The emergency control group, we are separate for the most part with the exception of our mayor from those political pressures. We don't have to worry about our election next term. We don't have to worry about making people happy. The only thing that we have to worry about is making sure we are doing what is in the best interest of the municipality based on public health and provincial legislation. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Great. Thank you for that, uh, Madam Clerk. Um, so I guess the question has been raised is there a mechanism uh, other than the information that comes from yourself, Madam Clerk, as the communication officer, is there a mechanism that can be explored that more in-depth information is shared to council through a process of in-camera um, and, and I guess in the sense of the communication that is to come from the mayor uh, to maybe add more, find out more clarity on that role and is, and, and is that exactly what it is, is can, the mayor can communicate to council, but it has to be in a form that is confidential, uh, or maybe that part of the plan has never been written yet. I, I'm not sure. I see you, Madam Clerk, um, I see you yeah. popped up again. Um, so your worship, if communication is an issue, we can definitely enhance our communications with council. Um, my recommendation would be that it be done through a closed session of council. Um, I could work with you in creating a closed session report to maintain the confidentiality and it's only available through the closed session report, which re requires that special login by council. Um, we can work together on that and make sure that uh, that's amicable. Um, but yeah, that is something that, that we can do uh, going forward. Um, but council needs to understand that there's been a lot of decisions made up until this point. And um, I don't know that I'm prepared to go back four months and say the reason we're doing this is because we did this four months ago. <laughs> yeah, well, I remember when we first started, we were meeting every day and then that was burning everybody out. And then I think we went to, uh, I think by, by daily or, or, or three times a week. And then, and then as time went on, then I think we got to once a week. And I, did we get to the point where we're doing it every other week? I can't remember, but then we, then we had a working group because we had to bring some policies forward. Then there was a committee set up to do policy work that then brought that forward to the working group or the EOC group. So it That's has right, transformed. Your worship. It I has think, transformed. Sorry, I don't mean to oh, yeah. But I think oh, yeah. when we were at that point where we were meeting every single day, there's, there's no way that there would have been the time for us to create a separate report to be added to a council agenda to be going forward at that time. Um, we are at a point now where we thought we could be bi-weekly, but we are meeting every week again. Um, but it is more manageable, I would say. Yeah, because at, right at the beginning, I mean, it was happening. Things were changing so fast. The province was shutting things down so fast. It, it just, uh, and, we, and we had never gone through that particular event before, which, you know, we certainly could write volumes of books now, <laughs> uh, but we know. So, okay, so saying from what you said uh, madam clerk do we need a resolution that sort of allows you and i to set something up in that forum or what what do we need or what do we need or i guess maybe the ca what do we need to move forward from this okay well first we have a notice of motion on the floor <laughs> and that has to be dealt with uh and do we deal with that first and then can we have a subsequent motion or something come out of that or just give me can, can you provide me some guidance madam clerk Certainly. Um, so I don't think you need a motion because your role under the emergency plan is that you are to provide communication to council. Um, so you can just hammer down and say, we're providing communication to council. It's already provided for in, in the act. So there doesn't need to be a, a resolution for that. Okay, great. Thank you for that clarity. Okay, so uh, we do have a notice of motion on the floor. It's moved by Councillor Nielsen, second by Councillor Allen. We've had a, a good discussion here. Is there any, other than going back to Councilor Nielsen or Allen, is there any further comments? And then I'll go back to the mover and seconder if there's any comments there. Any other comments from Council first? Any further comments from staff, CAO? Okay, Councilor Allen, do you have any further comments? Well, I think it's accomplished what, um, Councillor Nielsen set out to do to um, to get more information, and um, so that's good. And I want to ask Councillor Nielsen how he's going to vote. 
<laughs> so I'm not the only vote. The yes vote. Just kidding. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you for that, Councilor Allen and Councilor Nielsen. You have the last say. It is your notice of motion. I believe I have said all I needed to, sir. Thank you very much. All right. So since there's no other comments here, so we'll notice the motion again was moved by Councillor uh, Nielsen, second by Councillor Allen, but, and it, it, it is written to what is written in the in the uh, agenda. Uh, all in favor of the notice of motion. Okay, opposed. Hang on, I gotta go to the other screen. Okay, opposed, that motion is lost. Okay, thank you for that. Madam, or sorry, Councilor Little. I'm just uh, wondering if we could have um, uh, update, emergency update as a standing item under closed. And it could be like the county report, you know, like there may be a lot or a little to report on, but it's a standing item. So we always know that we're going to have an update. Just putting it out there as a possibility. And I think as the, the clerk had mentioned, that's something that her and I'll work on how, how best, and I think she's very supportive of how we, we move forward with some sort of format. Okay. Yep, go ahead, your point. For entertainment purposes, a recorded vote, please. Sure can. Okay, so um, I guess it's not too late, Madam Clerk. Sorry, Madam Clerk, answer a little we, fast. We can do that for sure. So a recorded vote was requested by um, Councillor Nielsen on the motion that all members of council be added to the Municipal Emergency Control Group as per the wording in section 6.1 of the Great Highlands Emergency Plan. So we'll start with Councillor Nielsen. Um, um, yes. Thank you. Councillor Valaket. No. Um, Councillor Allen. Yes. Councillor Alwood. No. Deputy Mayor Desai. Opposed. Councillor Little. You're muted, Councillor Little. Opposed. Thank you, and Mayor McQueen. I supported it support it <laughs> so that is a vote of three uh three four and four against so that motion has been lost okay thank you for that uh clerk. so moving on to the next item then is uh the uh, notice of motion to appoint a greyhound's representative to the local immigration partnership notice was previously presented at the 2000 sorry september 16th 2020 Deputy Mayor, you have the floor. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, fairly, um, fairly self-explanatory. Um, uh, fairly self-explanatory. I had given a bit of, uh, bit of, bit of information about what the LIP is uh, at the last meeting, um, and um, I guess the only thing in, in there is to appoint a representative. Now, one thing I will say, um, while I am interested in being the representative, there is no other municipal, there's no, uh, the other members aren't elected officials. They are um, uh, staff members that, that have been appointed to it by their respective municipalities. And so if we decide um, to uh, appoint a staff member, I'm perfectly fine with that as well. And what we could do is uh, we could just, um, uh, amend the motion to say that uh, council directs staff to appoint a um, a, rep a Grey Highlands representative to the LIP council. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it was everyone knew that I would be the only elected official at that table. Okay, so just before I move on, so you're moving this motion? I well, I'd like to get some. Uh, conversation around it first to see if we want to appoint a, a counselor or a staff person uh, well, before we I wonder if you did it in two parts that you uh, okay. you move the notice of motion and then have a second part that if it's proved then then we have a discussion around who is okay. um, appointed that is, that is that fair sure yeah if, if you want do if you want I don't know can you break it out that uh, the, the, two, the two only parts? problem is that there is only the one therefore clause um, oh. So 
that's the only issue there. So I think we would have to, oh, we've got the clerk. Yeah, I was just going to go there. Madam Clerk, can you add some um, clarity? Yeah, so technically there there is no, um, there's no separation. There is only one motion being presented. It is that we are appointing a member to the LIP. Well, can we write that in? We appoint a member from Gray Highlands as a representative, and then we pick that member afterwards. Can it? Can it? Can that be put in there? Um, you can. I'm just thinking that then you get the motion out of the way, and then we go back to a separate motion to, to, to determine on who you want. I'm just, I'm just suggesting yep. that to the deputy mayor is as mm -hmm. an idea. There is no motion on the floor at the present time, so you can do whatever oh. you'd like to do. <laughs> so what? What? Go, what we could. What we could do, Your Worship, is um, present the motion as is, except the last clause would read, therefore be it resolved that Grey Highlands Council um, appoint a representative to the LIP Council. Uh, and I'll, I'll move that and look for a second. I think, I think Danielle was maybe second. Is that correct, uh, Councillor Bellicat? Hang on, I got to find you here. Oh, lost you. Councillor Bellicat, were you seconding that? I'm not sure, but I will. Oh, I thought I saw something pop up that you were, okay. <laughs> Sorry about putting you on the spot there. <laughs> um, Madam Clerk, do you wish to speak to it? No, I was letting you know that Councillor Valakat had raised her hand okay. earlier to speak to the motion. So just for everybody's knowledge, our Matt, lovely Madam, Madam Clerk, she gives me a little little pointers of who wants to speak next. And, and I, I sort of read that on my screen. So <laughs> she's helping me. Okay, so the motion is on the floor that a representative uh, will be appointed. So um, Danielle, do you have anything to add to this mo notice motion as a seconder? Um, no, I, I, do have a, I do have a question for our, okay. um, our deputy mayor. And Go I ahead. apologize. Um, I do apologize, thank you, Mr. Mayor, because my, my memory is kind of murky, but it, it, correct me if I'm wrong, Deputy Mayor, did you send a letter asking about, um, you know, the fact that you were a political, um, in a political position and no one else was, and I'm, I thought I saw an email to that asking that question, but I don't remember the answer, so I was wondering if I could have a refresher on that. Okay, thank you, De Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, so yes, I, I had uh, sent that in and, and I sent her that the response uh, back and basically uh, the relevant part of the response that I got back basically reads, and I'm reading from the email here, in terms of representation, I believe you are correct that other municipal representatives on the last call were all staff members. Uh, these municipalities have appointed a staff resource who will provide updates to their councils and add action items from LIP to their work plans. However, it is definitely up to each municipality, Grey Highlands included, to appoint their representative, uh, staff, or elected member. Um, so they haven't really taken a position either way. Um, so, I mean, if we do have someone on staff who, um, for whom sort of... Um, reaching out to that Im immigrant population would be part of their work plan uh, or that it was something that they would be able to take on. I think that's how we should go. Um, it is very much an operational uh, working group or task for or operational group. Um, so it, it, I, I do find it very interesting, but I think it would be um, better uh, managed at a staff level. Um, I, I don't know if I've, I don't know if that answers your question, Councillor Valiquet. Councillor Valiquet, uh, any follow-up? Sorry, I am here. It's okay. You can talk. Let's, go ahead. Sorry, I my video um, instead of, yeah, so that kind of answers my first question, but now I have a new question. So from your response, um, Deputy Mayor, are you suggesting that you feel that this is a staff position and, and should not be a political player? Deputy Mayor. Um, I mean, 100%, I, I don't think it should be a political person. I just think it would be better uh, if it was a staff person who would, who would have this as part of their work plan. Um, it's it's everyone else there is a staff person, and so I don't think um, I don't think 
any reporting back that I, I did would be, would have any political bias to it. Um, but at the same time, um, the, the members of staff who are on that uh, group are there because their municipalities have decided that they're the person who could go there and, and in, involve the things that are being discussed at that, on, at that level into their work plan. Um, I, I do not really have a work plan at the municipality um, due to my position as an elected official. So I think um, the municipality would be better served uh, by having a staff person instead of an elected official. But in the default to you, Deputy Mayor, if if, if we are putting somebody on from Great Highlands and, and we can't find a staff person, you're willing to sit on there? I'm willing to sit on it. Right. Okay. Thanks for those questions, uh, Councillor Bellicat. Other councillors wish to have any questions? Uh, Madam CAO, you have a comment. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. Um, through you, I'm a little confused as to whether council can actually appoint a staff member other than the CAO, as your CAO is your only employee. Um, but I will uh, defer that to the clerk. Um, if it was to go to that uh, level, I would need time to research um, exactly what is expected and what the hours are before having a discussion with senior management team and then would respectfully like to come back to council to um, uh, propose a name. But I, I would think that it would be the CAO that would appoint that person. But I'm sure the clerk will correct me if I'm wrong. Unless, unless council appointed the CAO. <laughs> um, <laughs> Madam Clerk. Through your worship to um, the CAO, um, you're absolutely correct. And that's why I think the deputy mayor had worded his resolution in such a way um, that if they were just saying that they want to have some representation at that table. If it was to be a council member, then they would appoint the council member. If it was to be a staff member, they weren't going to appoint anything and let that be the CAO decision who would be um, added on that, uh, be a representative at that table. You mean, Madam Clerk, that the council can appoint the CAO to be on there? <laughs> I'm getting no comment there. <laughs> Blank page there. Sorry. Um, so technically, I guess a council could direct the CAO to attend yeah. those meetings. However, the yeah. CAO could delegate that authority to somebody else. So <laughs> there you go. There's the answer. <laughs> There's always an answer. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, Councillor Nielsen. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just am um, trying to understand what the um, LIP is and such and am on their website with a handbook of how the organization runs. It does say under that, that uh, municipal res representation uh, as a um, non-exhaustive list, but people who should be a part of the group does say municipal res representation as an elected city officials or bureaucrats representing involved or representatives involved with economic development and planning or public services and transit and such. So I think the group itself it, it, it wouldn't be um, out of the norm to have uh, council direct um, deputy mayor decide if he was interested uh, as it sounds like that would be a useful member of the group. They might learn something. <laughs> having, having diversity, diversity is good. Other comments? <clears throat> Other comments there? Okay, so um, any last comments, uh, Councillor Valiquette, or if not, uh, Deputy Mayor, you have last comments before we take this to a vote? Um, no, I, I'm, I look forward to what we do with the membership. Um, I think that's a discussion we could have, um, and yeah. Okay, so uh, seeing there's no other discussion, uh, moved by Deputy Mayor, second by Councillor. Sorry, just my Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Mayor, one quick thing, just so I understand where we're at, because I was trying to read this a little bit. We're about to pass a motion that says we're going to put a representative on, but not specifying who. Are we looking at the CAO to reach out to senior management staff to see if there's anybody interested? What is I the next suggest, step? I would suggest if this motion passed, there could be a subsequent motion that could come. Okay. Sorry, okay. sir, for delaying. Just making sure I understand where we're going. Thanks. Nope. No, it's, it's getting long in the tooth here today. It's been a long day. Um, Okay, so there's no other discussion. And again, it's been moved and second. So all in favor of this uh, notice of motion. 
Hang on, let me flip my screen. Okay, that's carried. All right, so is there then a, um, a separate motion? Councillor, Councillor Little. I'd like to nominate uh, Deputy Mayor Desai to be on this uh, LIP Council. Okay, do I have a seconder? Councillor Nielsen. All right, so the motion is on the floor, Madam Clerk, to uh, change the A representative to a cash <laughs> or just add more to the A's. All right, discussion. I guess the question should be is, and maybe this is what Norma protests, Deputy uh, Deputy Mayor, are you prepared to sit on there? If uh, yeah, ready? yeah. If the if the motion were to pass, I'd I'd be prepared to sit on it. And as the meetings went through, I'd bring back a, a report from it along with the minutes uh, to uh, the council meeting that followed uh, after that. Okay. So that's been moved and second. Any further comments with that motion? Councillor Valacat. Councillor Valacat. Sorry, I don't know why my phone is so, so, so takes so long to respond today. Um, I would like to see something, quite frankly, I, I think this is something that's staff thing. Um, it seems to me that it's less strategic and less directional than, um, than council, um, than, than the area that council normally sits in. So I think what I would suggest is an amendment to that um, motion that would suggest um, until a staff member can be assigned. Assigned or, I, I don't know if you wanna use the word assigned, uh, um, if, 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 if desired maybe, does that work better? Sorry, I don't understand, Mr. Mayor. So you're saying it would be, uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand how. Well, we can't assign because we don't have the authority the CEO does, but if there was a desire from a staff person. Anything, what I'm saying is that yeah. once, once um, and I think what the second motion would be to assign um, our CAO to find someone. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't know, and I mean, I, Clearly that's a question for the clerk, but my, my intent is not to say, um, you know, that somebody needs to be assigned tomorrow, but that in the future, that really the person that should be sitting in that seat, from my opinion, um, is a staff member. Um, and so I think we need to find that staff member. So I'm going to make, I'm going to seek out to see if there's a seconder to your amendment before we fully write that out. Councillor Little, are you seconding that? I'd just like to make a comment if I can. Yep. Do you want a seconder? No, I think it's I think it's valuable to have your comment first. I guess the way I was looking at this was um, appointing, or if if council does agree that um, deputy mayor decide be our representative, there's nothing to preclude a change at some point. Um, I think because Councillor Desai, or sorry, Deputy Mayor Desai has brought this forward, um, he, he obviously has an interest and he's expressed a willingness to be part of this um, council. And I think perhaps, um, you know, he did talk about a work plan, but I think perhaps his role there would be to participate, to gather information. And I go back to our meeting this morning when we were talking about economic development and, um, you know, focusing in on a few priorities. And I worry that um, that a staff gets spread too thin. If, uh, and, and certainly this could fit into an economic development um, plan where we're attracting visitors to our municipality. And um, so I see there's a, there's a, you know, a confluence there of the two um, and maybe it will just take some time. Uh, and I think uh, because uh, Deputy Mayor Desai is interested, he's the right person to be in that role. Um, and it could just be short term. I don't, but I don't think we need to put in there that, um, you know, it's not precluding that it would not become a staff responsibility. Maybe that rolls out of our economic development as um, attracting visitors to the municipality. So um, I, I like the motion the way it is, and I, um, I don't think an amendment is necessary. That's my opinion. Okay, 
Um, so, uh, so Danielle, you're you're moving an amendment. I'm going to see if there's a seconder for your for your amendment, and then we can write that out if there is. Okay. So, is there a seconder for um, Councillor Bellicat's uh, amendment to the main motion? Councillor Allen, you're you're moving that. Okay, I got a nod. Okay, so I'm going to go back to uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, can you sort of draft that just uh, for what Councillor Bellicat was sort of asking for? Certainly. So that the main motion be amended by adding the following clause at the end of the motion until a staff member is appointed to the position by the CAO. Does that sound uh, okay, Councillor Bellicat? And Councillor Allen, are you okay with that uh, motion? Okay. So we have an amended uh, amending motion on the floor. I'm going to open it for discussion. Any discussion there? I should maybe go to you, Councillor Bellicat, first because you moved the motion. I apologize for that. Do you have anything to add to your motion? No, um, no, I, I don't have anything uh, to add. I, I am cognizant of um, adding um, work to staff. I just feel that this is there are there are um, some things that are working um, worker bee tasks and then and then some things fall more strategic and I, I'm just concerned that this is um, uh, that this that this possibility there's a possibility that this is something more staff related and, and is going to be associated with many tasks and, um, and that's what my, where my concern lies. Okay, thank you. Councillor Allen, do you have any to add as a seconder before I go to Councillor Nielsen? Maybe we shouldn't have anybody on it. Well, that could be another, uh, that could be another motion, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, okay, Councillor Nielsen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would just go back to um, when I'm at the, uh, the handbook and the guidebook for um, these groups. Uh, it does kind of suggest that they want a mix of representation. Uh, Deputy Mayor Desai mentioned that he was the only uh, government official or, or elected official, sorry, is probably a better term, who was at the table. Um, sometimes in, in things like this, having a different uh, viewpoint is, is a good thing. So that's why I would support having uh, Deputy Mayor Desai there. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion from councillors? Seeing none. So right now we're voting. Councillor Allen, Councillor Allen wishes to speak, Your Worship. Yeah, I just saw the clerk send me that. Councillor Allen, go ahead. So I have a question for uh, the Deputy Mayor. How does this um, fit into our strategic plan? Okay. Councilor so Deputy. one of the, thanks, sorry, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through you to Councillor Allen. Uh, one, of, one of the um, uh, um, pillars of our a strategic plan is, and I don't have it right in front of me, uh, but relates to economic development. Um, the immigrant population is, is one of the uh, fastest growing demographics. And I think, you know, if, if we can increase the um, population of our area, that relates directly to economic development. And, you know, that, that's, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons, that's one of the ways that uh, connects to the uh, strategic plan. I guess I feel that our resources can be better used um, than uh, than on this um, committee or um, partnership. Um, that's that's my thought. I don't think I would be able to support um, support this. And that's a fair point, Your Worship. Okay, thank you for that. Um, just a comment. I'm trying to think at the county. Um, there was a lady there that wor was working with the immigration um, portfolio of the county and looking for housing uh, in that. Uh, Jacinda Rudolph, I think you're thinking yes. of. Yes. So she yeah. was the one who had emailed me initially uh, to see if I would uh, sit um, because there was one meeting which was coming up uh, quite quick and, and she was sort of wondering if I would sit in on that and I said I'll sit in on the one and then I'll wait until um, until the council meeting following um, for uh, uh, to have council appoint or I'll bring someone 
I'll bring it forward at the following council meeting. So that's, that's sort of been the progression of this matter. So how often do they meet? Once, four times a year or how often? Do they four meet? times a year. Uh, okay. Right now, so they had their first meeting, I, I think it was September, and they're going to meet four times in 2020 just to get things rolling. And then starting next year, they're going to be meeting once a quarter. Right. Okay. Thank you for that. Any further discussion? Okay, so again, this is on the amendment part, not the main motion, okay? And and that, uh, Madam Clerk, is to, can you reread that, please, just so everybody remembers? <laughs> Certainly, Your Worship. Um, that the main motion be amended by adding the following clause at the end, until a staff member is appointed to the position by the CAO. Okay. All right. So uh, those in favor of the amended motion. One, hang on, I gotta go over here. Uh, two, I think I'm only seeing- Sorry, your worship, it's, you're not voting on the amended motion, you're voting on the amendment. Yeah, the amend, the amendment, yeah, sorry. I didn't quite, yeah, the amendment to the motion, yes. So that's one, two, three. Okay, that's, uh, that's okay, opposed to the, the amended motion. One, two, three, and I also vote as well. So that amended motion is lost. So now we go back to the main motion, which is now saying appointment of Deputy Mayor uh, as a representative to the LIP Council. I'm just reading the last line. Discussion on the main motion. Okay, all in favor of this notice of motion. No, sorry. It's the. Did I get that correct, Madam Clerk? Uh, yes. We, yes. Yes. That is it. the main motion unamended because the amendment was lost. That's right. Okay. Sorry about that. All in favor? One, two, three, four, five. The motion is carried. Okay. All right. So moving on then to County Council report. Um, Deputy. Deputy. Uh, Mayor, do you wish to go first? Uh, sure. Uh, so the, we passed the, um, the bylaw for, for the speed limits in Gray County, and Eugenia is going to go down to uh, 40 kilometers an hour. Um, I did bring up at that time that municipally we're looking at moving all of our hamlets to 40 kilometers, and uh, I was encouraged by the response that anytime, if we make that change, I can bring a uh, notice of motion to county council, and then we would sort of revisit that bylaw and change the speed limits on that. Um, uh, and I, I can't remember if it was part of the bylaw as well, but in the report two weeks prior to that, um, that they presented with all the changes and so on, they had mentioned in there that Eugenia would be going to 40 kilometers an hour. Kimberly, they would be undertaking a traffic calming study um, uh, in order uh, instead of reducing the speed limit. And from what I've heard so far, what they're going to be doing is putting, um, I don't know if, if anyone's been out near Terra, what they've done there is they've put up um, pylons in the middle of the road and that slows traffic down to the, gives you the impression that you're going through a, a construction zone. And on the first and last pylon, they have the speed limit put onto it. And so you're very, you're very conscious of that. Uh, because there is sort of a, a thing right in the middle of the road. So I, that's what I think they're going to be trying. Um, uh, and and uh, see one's going from 60 to 50. Yes, correct. I was trying to think of the other ones there. Yes, see one's going to, uh, from 60 to 50. Um, and I can't think of uh, what else there was. Your Worship, I'm sure I'm missing something, but... Well, we were going to go back in County Council yes. starting tomorrow, oh. but now we're following back to the Zoom meetings again because of the changes yep. there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I know I know you want to give everybody a hug. <laughs> well, not even a hug. I just want to be back in Council Chambers. I missed yeah. my spot there. That's all. <laughs> 
it's 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 a good thing that's for sure um I will add that the uh, gray transportation, I guess the correct point is the gray transportation route, community transportation service is up and running. There are four routes, uh, Own Sound to Wyerton, Own Sound to Blue Mountains. I uh, was there a couple weeks back for a photo op with the mayor there. Uh, the uh, Own Sound to down through Shelburne and Orangeville. And on Monday, I was on um, uh, the Gray Road 4, and I got picked up at 12.05 in Flusherton. Uh, Christine Robinson got picked up in Durham uh, a little after that, and then Sue Patterson got picked up in, in Durham, and we went to uh, to see uh, Chris Peabody in Brockton, and then we came back on the bus. So it's, they're, they're all brand new buses. Right now it's free through a period of time until everybody gets used to them. They can take 10, 10 people on per bus. You have to, pre, you have to uh, book your spot. Uh, and that's uh, through the process that they have you go to the website, you'll find uh, where that, that is. So it's just starting new, all new equipment. They, they look the like orange, orange color, uh, if you see them around, but uh, it's an exciting time. We So part of that, we've got a, a two year grant um, uh, from that. And uh, Nathan's wife, Stephanie has been succumbed from West Gray and she's been in charge of this at the county and she's done a lovely job by putting this all together and it's uh, it's up and running. So if you get a chance, to, you you want to go somewhere, check it out. It's uh, it's uh, really a, a cool uh, a cool uh, uh, service that's being provided. Uh, yes, in here there are the minutes of, of September 10th, which seems like a long time ago now. It's like <laughs> it's October, and uh, certainly tomorrow we <laughs> excuse me have a, our county council tomorrow. I, I just escapes me. Um, there is tomorrow on the report coming forward with the rail trail. And with regards to uh, whether they go from the 54 inch ATV use to a side by side, which is up to 65, there is a report there with uh, an increased cost. And uh, Madam CEO, there is a little concern around liability as well. So um, I thought I'd throw that in there. Um, but uh, anyway, we start that tomorrow. And uh, certainly I'm on an MOU meeting along with the County Council tomorrow. So the Deputy Warden will be. Uh, be chairing the meeting, I will be part of it, but I certainly have um, an, uh, an MOU uh, with the province, which is part of AMO and with ministries. So that's gonna be uh, my second one that I've been on. And uh, I'm, I, I'm being asked to speak tomorrow with one of the ministers, uh, but I can't, I can't talk about that because that's confidential. So anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get stuff. Councilor Nielsen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one question for you regarding the county update. There is the um, uh, DC policy that's being reviewed and it says it's going out to the public. Wondering what's the timeline on that. Excited to see that they are contemplating waiving the additional dwelling units, um, detached additional dwelling units. Uh, that's, on, policies. That's, on, that's on for tomorrow, right? Is the actual pol the bylaw on for tomorrow or is, yeah. is it going out to public? The reports, the reports coming forward. And part of that, part of that's for, um, as we recall, it's almost going back two years. Uh, I think it was the council, the past council added clarity. I can't remember, was this council or last council that added clarity for our DC charge that we don't charge on the secondary. And that's the process that, that they're going forward as well. So I think it was brought forward in last meeting and maybe the bylaws on for tomorrow, I recall. And, uh, but that's, that's a good thing because as you are aware, Councilor Nielsen, in our official plan, we do allow secondary units uh, within um, our official plan. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's another opportunity, it's another tool for affordable housing and however, our secondary revenue, it's, it's been in there for a number of years from the province. So, excuse me, this is great news in the sense of, of wavering these DC charges because that's a substantial savings on that. And maybe it'll, it'll kickstart more people doing it and create more affordability for people to live here. So, so yeah, that's a, that's a good thing. Um, there. Just, just yeah. to jump in there, I got an uh, invite, an email invite from Tara Werder today for a public meeting uh, yes. regarding the proposed amendment to the DC bylaw for uh, Thursday, October 22nd at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, I can send out an email or I can send out an email, email connecting you to her if you would like to get invited onto that same meeting. To go and support it. <laughs> yeah, there's a number of changes here, not just the secondary yeah. units, but there's 
there's a lot, I think, what do they call it? Not the CIP, what do they call it? There's a community, um, um, there's all the changes to the DC charge um, that's that's just changed. So there's a lot of things that they're coming forward with. I can't, uh, I'm trying to think, Madam, maybe the CEO could help me, but it's it's it doesn't matter. There's, there's it's reflecting to some of those changes that's happened in that new DC charge act that's came, that was in place, so. Um, I don't, nothing else comes to mind. I, we, have, we still got a few things. I don't know if there's any questions from council with regards to anything at the county. Um, okay, nothing there. Okay, so then uh, uh, council privileges. What would council like to, to bring up? Council Little. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, uh, for those of you who sit on Nottawasaga and Saugeen Valley, and I know, um, Mr. Mayor, that you've been, you sat on Nottawasaga at one time, and you may be familiar with the Laternal Conference. It's been going yep. on for a number of years in early November, usually. Um, and this, this year, they decided not to go forward with the usual, you know, conference uh, getting together. I went two years ago, and it was very worthwhile. In its place, they decided to do some webinars. And uh, so the first one was yesterday, I think it was, yesterday morning. Um, and there's three more, it's about leadership. And um, so the first one will be made available. Um, if you, uh, if any of you want to, you know, um, when I have the link, I'll share it with you and you can go in. It was um, three parts, there was, a presentation on the history of conservation authorities, how they came about, why they came about. Then the second part was on the uh, challenges starting around 1995, um, the challenges and how things changed to that model. And then the last part of the presentation was on um, the current situation and what's happening and what we can expect and how uh, Conservation Ontario is working with the ministries, both uh, Ministry of the Environment and Ministry of Natural Resources. So I, I think it was um, a very uh, useful and interesting uh, entire overview of conservation authorities, which kind of takes us up to you know where we're at, where we're at today, and why we're here. And um, uh, I would recommend, especially you who are sitting on the co uh, conservation authorities, but anybody, uh, you know, you may be a representative at some point. So. Um, it's not always a, it's a little bit complicated, you know, when you don't know much about a conservation authority and um, these presentations were very well done. So I will share if you want me to um, the link when I get it and I uh, just wanted to make council aware. So it's easier for you to forward to the clerk and then she can send it out, maybe some staff as well. I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll do that when I, when I can. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other uh, Councilor privileges or comments? We have, a, I think, an opening at Susan's uh, Delicacy this Friday. Councilor Allwood's waving his hand, sir. Sorry, Councilor Allwood, go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. I uh, just wanted to mention that the uh, Joint Municipal Physicians Recruitment and Retention Committee uh, had their first meeting, and uh, the uh, there was a presentation from a, uh, a recruiter, and uh, I think the uh, committee is looking towards um, hiring a recruiter at some point and uh, talk briefly about budget requirements for, for something like that. There are currently four municipalities uh, who are involved in that, Blue Mountains, ourselves, Collingwood, and uh, Clearview. And I think Meaford attended, but they haven't committed in whole at this point, but um, there is there is a, a budget request for, uh, uh, I, I just received this letter and um, today, and uh, the um, they're looking for funding for th over a three year period, but uh, I did I did make the uh, treasurer aware in a finance liaison meeting uh, of, of a potential budget request for, uh, or, 2021 of twenty five thousand dollars, and uh, it looks like they're looking for that over the next three years to, to fund this. So uh, I'll be um, making sure that this gets on the agenda for our next meeting. But uh, I do seem to recall that Councillor Allen uh, 
had some experience uh, in the physician recruitment uh, area before him, uh, this initiative. And uh, I just thought I'd mention that at this point. Uh, and I will provide the minutes and the, uh, the, the letter uh, to the clerk in time for our next meeting. I also wanted to mention that uh, as the liaison to the Chamber of Commerce, that the Chamber of Commerce will be looking to put a grant application in to further promoting tourism in Grey Islands. And uh, we'll be working with uh, the municipality to uh, coordinate those efforts. But, uh, and the last point I wanted to make was the, um, the uh, task force on the in, um, internet infrastructure in Grey Highlands. I just got a, uh, an email from, uh, probably everybody did from the um, municipal world. There's a, uh, a webinar coming up that might be of interest to somebody on that task force, but uh, there's costs associated with it. I think it's hundreds of dollars, $224. I think that's a early bird that has to be in by the 9th of October. So just uh, I'm not sure how to proceed with that or whether there's any interest in the task force uh, attending that. But those are the points I wanted to bring up. Well, you can Council certainly forward that for communication as well, Councillor Elwood. Pardon me? You can certainly forward that as communication or if, if the, you want. The uh, Municipal World Infrastructure uh, Webinar? Or? Well, no. Well, yeah, that as well as your you, the other item that you raised there as well, the task force. Right. Yep. Okay. I will. And do and, uh, you have anything else? No, that's it for... Are, are you prepared to move but we go past five o'clock? <laughs> Am I prepared? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'll move that the uh, council goes beyond five. Okay. And Councillor Nielsen, you're seconding that. Uh, any discussion on that from council? All in favor? That's carried. Okay. I just, I, I was, my clerk gave me a little note there and I thought I'd seize the opportunity, Councillor Allwood. So there you go. Thank you for that. Any other um, comments from councillors? Uh, I'll just say briefly that uh, my term is, of warden is, is uh, approaching uh, the end of November and uh, generally the, the election of warden is, is uh, it's the first Tuesday in December. Um, unfortunately this year we weren't able to have our, our uh, warden's uh, breakfast or, or the forum or the um, warden's banquet, which it would have been nice to have all of council at that banquet. I would have been really looking, been proud to have you all there and and some staff and uh but with COVID-19 it it certainly um it is what it is and we all have to be safe and as we said earlier on we we have to get through this I will be doing a final address uh November 26 it's a traditional part of the last um county council of of the sitting warden we'll we'll, we'll do an address to the county and it will get to and uh, what's the word um into the minutes and uh so uh, anyway it's it's been a fast that's i don't know where time has gone and uh it's time just flies along when you're having fun i guess and that we're all been having fun but i really appreciate the support that everybody has given me and uh again uh it's uh it's uh winding toward the end of november so uh, hopefully we get good weather this fall as they as they talk about so all right so uh Carrying on then, so we have no other council privileges. So um, we need a motion. Then we have. Uh, an can item we can we take a ten minute break before we go into close? Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. So let's see. What time is it now? So it's four fifty nine. Can we come back at five ten? Is that yep. what? Okay. okay. I'll get wait, the finish. Wait 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 wait, oh. wait, 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 wait. Can we please do the motion to move into closed? hold our break as we're moving into close because otherwise because oh, sure. <laughs> I have to set right. up the separate meeting and all that okay jazz so well, do, Sorry, and we need more. can we have 15 minutes instead yeah. of 10 yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so I have wonderful. time to get that part done after the break hey if you do do if you're making you're doing two things at once we get an extra five minutes though. <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so can I have a mover to go in camera I'll move okay that's deputy mayor councilor Nielsen and I apologize if I, other people are on my screen, I'm not trying to miss you on purpose. Okay, so that we're moving and close uh, to discuss the matters related to the following. And as it's laid out, a joint venture section 239, a position plan, procedure, criteria, and or instruction to be applied to any negotiation carried on or to be carried on by or on behalf of the municipality local board 
and C, uh, and that the CAO, Karen Gobin, Director Michelle Harris, Harrison, Harris, sorry, Gray County Manager of Economic Development, Steve Furness, and Clerk Raylene Martel remain in attendance. Any discussion there? Seeing that, all in favor? That is carried. Okay, so we'll take a little break to 515. Your Worship. Yes. Your Worship, do we leave this meeting? Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to provide that. So all of council will leave this meeting um, in 10 minutes. Join the other meeting that you have the invitation for. Um, if Michelle can contact Mr. Um, Furness and uh, Manager Furness and give him the, the instruction that at 510 he can uh, join that meeting. Uh, Jerry Lynn, our lovely deputy clerk, will maintain this meeting and have the signage up uh, notifying the public that we are in closed session and we will return after. Okay, well, thank you for that. And uh, so we, it was passed and we are going into camera. So take your break and we'll see you back in at uh, quarter after.
We're getting so good at this. <laughs> so good. Or in, in the words of Neil Diamond, so good. So good. Oh, Just remember we are live. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, smarten up. <laughs> it's, it's been a long one. Sorry. So, Madam Clerk, I may open up two ones so one I can look at the read and I can look at the chat. You can't open to your worship, you'll get feedback. I just realized that. <laughs> so I'll go to the big screen. Um, okay. Oh. Go to our chat. Now, if I go to the chat, uh, you're going to send that to me on the chat. Is that right? Um, I'm trying, your worship, but it's saying you're not in the meeting. Okay, hang on. Does that help? If I go off video? And if I go like that, does that even help up more? Mm. You want me to go mute for a second? Yeah, I posted it in the chat for the panelists. You're muted, Paul. <laughs> I'll do that all over again. So I just want to um, uh, welcome everyone back to our, our council meeting. Uh, we have uh, come out of uh, closed session. And uh, now that we're uh, in open session, I do have a report out from our closed session. And I just have to find it here. <clears throat> Okay, and so that uh, we're in open session that a closed meeting was held and only closed session items identified were discussed in a closed session and that council directed staff to proceed with the establishment of an economic development corporation and to move forward with a media release announcing the collaborative project. Okay, Deputy Mayor. I'll move. Second by Councilor Nielsen. Uh, any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor? That is carried. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, moving on then to our later part of our agenda here. Uh, I need a motion for the confirming bylaw. Council Deputy Mayor, Councilor Little. Any discussion, all in favor? That is carried. Uh, we have a list of a few upcoming meetings that are listed there. And uh, Madam Clerk, you're on mute. There you go. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I just wanted to bring forward a little bit of information to Council that, okay, thank you, um, that um, our upcoming meetings are uh, wrought with presentations. I don't know if wrought's the right word, but we have uh, our water and wastewater studies presentation coming up. We have a budget presentation coming up. Um, we have our planning fees pr presentation coming up. And all of these presentations are taking up um, the majority of, if not all, of our delegation presentation um, timelines associated with our procedure bylaw. And um, I'm wondering if council um, might want to make a little bit of allowances to um, extend the delegation presentation timeline to um, to waive the requirements of the procedure bylaw for delegation presentation timelines so that we may allow at least one delegation in addition to the presentations that we have coming forward. Um, I'm not thinking that it's quite fair to have um, no delegations be able to speak until December almost, which is how it's looking. No, at the time. We'll, we'll certainly hear about that. So what do you need then, Madam Clerk? Um, do you so need a motion or do you need something? Yes. Um, really, I would like to have a motion um, that council agreed to waive the requirements of the procedure bylaw by to allow at least two delegations in addition to any scheduled presentations. 
Councillor Allen and Councillor Allwood. On a procedure to worship. Okay, I think I got Councillor Allen to speak and the Deputy Mayor. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering if the staff presentations are are just that presentations as opposed to an actual delegation. So the wording of the uh, procedure bylaw is that uh, they're not staff staff presentations. Uh, some of them are consultants that we have had doing our studies. Um, but the wording of our procedure bylaw uh, provides what a, a presentation is, and they each are uh, qualified as a presentation presenting to council by either staff or consultants. Um, mm -hmm. And it does state that it's only um, for 30 minutes or um, three uh, delegations, whichever comes first, for maximum 30 minutes. Perhaps we should be amending our procedural bylaw to, to put some of those over Separate into the staff. Yeah. Right. And, and, and so uh, maybe, Madam Clerk, you can consider that as a separate report, maybe, or do you need direction to do that too? Or are we going to come up for a review of our procedural bylaw at a, at a certain time? We are already in a review of our procedure bylaw, which started back in February. Um, it just hasn't been brought back yet due to time constraints of other items that are on the table. It's another presentation. <laughs> it's one of those things that, you know what, we have a procedure bylaw that works. So that yeah. item just falls down um, due to more pressing matters. Right. Uh, I, I tell you, the, the, the daylight's getting down because I'm getting darker in this room. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Arisha. But it's always sunny where I am here in Gray Island. Uh, yeah. Just a point of procedure, I guess. Wouldn't we need a two thirds vote to uh, bring this motion forward because it wasn't on the agenda? Now, uh, far be it for me to tell the clerk how to do her job, but. I, I, high five, uh, high five. <laughs> I would tend to agree with you on that. Um, I'm bringing this forward because it is in relation to upcoming meetings, which is an item on our current council agenda. There you go. She had a connection there. Yeah, half a high five. All right, good, good. Well, at least we're in good humor at the end of the day. So we do have it moved by Councillor Allen and Councillor Allwood that do we allow that uh, um, change to our procedure bylaw to allow that to come forward. And and uh, is there any further discussion on that? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. Okay, well. I'll, I'll move to adjourn your worship before anyone else gets to it. All right, moved by Deputy Mayor, second by Councilor Nielsen. All in favor? Nobody's in favor. Nobody's in favor. I know it's, it's sometimes you don't even have to ask the vote. You just have one person move it, two people move it, but I guess I'm old school. So anyway, um, <laughs> thank you. And uh, what do we got here? We're adjourned. Whoops. Did I, did I just, I just think I just get rid of everybody there. I'm just checking the time. It is 6.32. Oh gosh. All right. Well, All right. Everybody, have the rest, everybody can have the rest of the night off. How's that sound? Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Good night.